Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to the Beastly Thought Show again. Welcome everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all having a wonderful week. What is up everyone? Uh, What's going on? Look, let me just start off by saying that I'm supposed to be playing Destiny 2 right now with a ton of friends on Twitter. I, You know what? The last couple of weeks, the rigam and roll of doing Beastly Thoughts kind of slipped out of my mind because we had some uh, scheduling issues between the three hosts. And all week I was touting this meet up at one o'clock to go through all of the raids on destiny 2 and uh last night unfortunately for me robbie and uh, not too nerdy i drank a shit ton of bourbon <laughs> yeah you did i drank a whole bottle and 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 you know that that look you get you know from your from your uh from your spouse i said drink a little bit she's like no just a little bit no i'm fine i got that so i had to drink the whole thing yeah. because you know i'm a, I'm a man Ended up staying up all night beating my son or getting my ass kicked. Whoa, 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 whoa. Smash, Smash Brothers. <laughs> He's too old to get beat. He's 17. He's yeah, totally true, true. Uh, it's also, hard to get somebody a butt whooping that has more hair on their legs than you, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, also, I want to let everyone uh, know in the chat real quick if you guys cannot see my webcam, that is because I was having some issues with it before the stream. Uh, after this show, I'm going to get it figured out. But if you just see these two, these two handsome mugs, yeah. that is why you cannot see my face. Uh, you can probably just hear me, but you cannot see me. So, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us as always. It's only one handsome guy here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just one handsome guy. Funny thing is, definitely right. not too nerdy. Yeah, so, so very recently... invisible. Beastly's hungover. We got Robbie technical issues. I'm just a moron. I'm just I a ghost. Forgot that the microphone <laughs> isn't here. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. I'm like, yo, oh, my man. microphone was literally yeah. behind me. Sorry if you guys couldn't hear me too well before. So I'm back. <laughs> okay, that explains yeah, yeah. that. I, I am totally hungover, but you know, I'm trying to be a professional, and so that's going to go straight. Our out professionalism the is out the window. This Today week. is going to be oh, a yeah. really exciting episode of Beastly Thoughts. First of all, Beastly Thoughts is the best show on the internet i love doing this show i love talking to you guys i love covering the news and it's been three weeks and to me that's just way too long to go yeah, without your friend. it's been a minute it really has we yeah, uh has. and and today's episode is going to be something special something that's i guess in the 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 distant memory of lots of gamers e3 just happened and uh, when it happened we all yeah. watched from our own cubicles you know, around the globe from Canada and the United States. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of thoughts on the things that we saw, but we weren't able to put it together cohesively and talk about it on our show because our show didn't go on for three weeks. Mm -hmm. So here we are today. Today we're going to talk about E3, what happened. What happened is like Hillary Clinton's new book. What happened at E3? <laughs> Who won E3? Oh, and uh, it's going to be super exciting. So yeah. I'm really looking Hell yeah, absolutely. And we are very excited to bring it all to you this week, finally, together. And yes, Good Bites, I know it's a little weird because there's three people, but you'd only see two of them. Uh, I'm going to basically just be a ghost, I guess. So uh... Just pretend like the, the image of Rob Skull's lips are yeah, moving. Yeah, pretend I'm here. You, know. you, you, see the, you guys see the cartoon of Rob. Yep. So if, if you just make those lips move. Well, no, they can't even see that. Like, my picture's not even showing up. Like, it's literally just you guys. <laughs> so... Oh, okay. Well, just pretend like there's two black guys. And in Hector. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Super black, kind of black. Uh, and, Hector. and some tan Spanish guy yeah. from Jersey. <laughs> Two very handsome gentlemen, uh, if you ask me. I, I said this before the show. I'm super jealous. I cut my own hair. So it's like the, the lineups are crispy, right? But when I get on here and I see Hector's hair, the, the way it grows and the way it's, it's temp faded, I'm fucking jealous. But the thing is, I'm a black guy, so I can't walk through the hood with Hector's hairdo without getting yeah. jumped on. Like, what the hell is happening? But yeah, Hector, your hair is fucking beast mode. I love it, man. It looks that's really why great. you wear you just wear a fitted hat in the hood, man. You're good that's to a, go. That's yeah, you're good to go. That's how you do it. That's, that's that's very crispy. I love the way that looks, man. I'm working on your art too, so if people uh, follow me on Twitter. You guys saw a little piece of art I did yesterday. I'm doing Hector's. I'm doing Robbie's. I'm going to redo all the Beastly Thoughts logo. It's going to be fucking amazing. So look forward to that in the near future. Oh yeah, just because we've been on hiatus for a few weeks doesn't mean. Things haven't been going down. Things have been in progress, and we are very, very excited to bring them very, very soon. And uh, next week, we'll probably be back to normal. You'll, you'll see me, so, and not just hear me, which is probably very weird. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> this has got to be strange. Everyone watching. Listen, Robbie, your voice is so hypnotic that when you speak, I don't look at you anyway. I just get into a hypnotic track. Yeah, I just put everyone so, in a daze. Right, 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 right. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so 
quick question before we get started. Mm-hmm. Just just to lay it out there, foundation. Who do you guys think won E3 2018? Just of the big three. And we're not. I'm not going to mention EA or Ubisoft or Bethesda. I'm talking mm-hmm. about Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. I believe that Microsoft actually won this year. 110. Uh, percent Yes. 110. percent What do you think, Nazi I think Russia hacked the PlayStation uh, press conference because <laughs> clearly, clearly they're sabotage. Because that was a horrible. That was probably the worst presentation I've ever oh, seen. Oh man! Because they oh, had man. they had the best games. It they was... literally had the best games, but the worst presentation. That's like here. I have the best games, but I'm just gonna present it to I'm you. I'm just like gonna crap. present them it so terribly. It half was just yeah. hacked at one point. I swear they're talking. Russia hacked. And you heard you heard like people talking Russian or something in the background, like I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I, you know, I watched E3 through WikiLeaks this year, so yeah, there he you might go. be right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is going on? But uh, yeah, Microsoft like did what you know the I people think they wanted had to do. I think they did what they had to do. I just don't think they presented enough exclusive games. Like, what what game was exclusive? That's why I can't say they won either. I say Nintendo won. It, and Nintendo didn't really win by a lot, but Nintendo won because at least Nintendo showed exclusive games. They showed certain things that people were excited about. And, and they released was, Fortnite. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fortnite. They said something that people didn't expect to be ready right away. Two million downloads the same night. Yeah, see, so, you know, I mean, like, that that was something special to hear. So I think Nintendo won. And Microsoft didn't bring any games. Everything they brought over was just uh, third-party companies, and that was the third-party company opportunity to show. They bought because- Ninja Theory, man. Yeah. They bought Ninja Theory. Come on, Heavenly yeah. Sword, Hellblade. Well, what God. game did what game did they show for it? They just said, "Oh, we bought this studio. What was it going to be for? The next Xbox?" Well, Is- I mean, to, to me, right? If because I'm on a ketogenic diet and I love it, but if you're going to talk about what you're making in the kitchen. The first thing you have to do before you buy the ingredients is get a nice oven or get a nice stove top. So to me, they, they actually uh, branched out and got talent. Now, I, I don't know if I would say like Playground Games or is, is like the best get because all they do is like the Forza series. Right. People love that game. People really enjoy what they do. Uh, you know, But to me, it's kind of a niche, a niche kind of uh, a studio because that's the only thing they've done so far. Uh, but Ninja Theory... And these other three studios that they announced, to me, that is their, uh, their, I guess, their accent to what they're going to be creating. Uh, t- you have to say that, hey, I bought a really nice oven before you show people what you make in it a couple weeks later. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, think, I, think, I think that they, they're on the right path, at least when it comes to uh, reaching out, grabbing studio. They got a Santa Monica studio. That's going to be competing with like Sony Santa Monica. You know, there are probably people out there working at Sony Santa Monica who are talented and who've done this for years, who are looking to branch off and potentially try something else. It's going to be competing just, you know, neck and neck with some of the biggest game studios in the world now. So to me, that that whole movement of getting the five studios, the five exclusive studios for Microsoft was a great thing. I do agree with you, though, Nacho Nerdy. I don't think that uh, they showed exclusives per se right. i think they showed a lot of uh, third-party games uh, i think they showed a lot of pc and xbox type exclusives but that's a lot better than what they've been shown. i mean over the last few i'd say the last two years there's been nil so they showed a total of 50 games at e3 yeah. microsoft and I... to me go ahead Robbie. i'm sorry i've been diatribe no 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 sorry, guys. It's yeah perfect. Yeah, I was just looking for a point to interject. I didn't want to interrupt you. But um, I personally just think they did the best possible job they could have done, right? With what they had, what they could have possibly shown. And uh, just announcing that they've acquired these studios. Like, they're showing that they're a very forward-thinking company. And they're thinking towards Absolutely. the future. Obviously, they said, you know, we're going to do a new console. Eventually, that's going to happen. Uh, we have these new studios. Obviously, we're acquiring. We're working on new IPs. We're working on first parties. Because, you know, these things take time. Like, we can tell them... All day long that, hey, you know, we want new studios, we want new games, we want new exclusives, like things like that, like a reason to buy the console or a reason to play on their platform. Scalebound! It, 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 man, rest in peace. <laughs> but yeah, no, it takes time. It takes a lot of time to uh, get these studios together to make these games. And I think, honestly, with what they had and what they could have presented, I think they did do the best possible job they could have. And it was a really a tight problem. presentation. It was a really great conference. I, you, you know it's going to be good because... It, 
Not too dirty doesn't fuck around. Here's okay, the problem, he right? I'm going to say, here we go. All right, go Hector. back to your analogy, Beastly. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, they got an oven. Yeah, they're preparing food. It's going to be great in a few. I'm hungry now. I want to eat right now. Can I eat right now? <laughs> I'm just saying, though. I- I'm hungry now. Well, I've got to wait months uh, to eat. I got to respect you know? that. Don't, respect. don't tell me, like, oh, I- I'm Microsoft. like, that's Quit great. I don't know if I'm going to be hungry away. eight months from now. Yeah. I'm hungry. I want to hear Robbie. Robbie's interjecting. <laughs> What's going on, Robbie? No, I was saying, I want the food now. I don't want to wait, like, eight to nine yeah, months. I want it now. But, 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 look, you got to crawl before you walk. I mean, you can't go from not having any games or any exclusives that people are, are really excited for to just having everything. You first got to build your talent you got to get people with you know creative minds and imaginations who are talented in the studio you got to pull them in and let them do the work so uh to me it's it's a step that had to take place quite frankly for them to be where they need to be in the future if they're going to be tangible you know as a, a console creator in the future they have to do this you know nintendo is just taking off unbelievably fast sony is at the lead and and sony is quite frankly at the lead because of their exclusives in general, I think that's why Sony is leading. They had a very great start at the end of 2013, but they they followed that up with exclusive offerings that you can't play anywhere else. Right. Microsoft didn't really have that aspect. They went after power versus creativity. Now they got the most powerful console out there. You got to pay 500 bucks for it. But if they create games that people have to play, like Days Gone, The Last of Us 2, the stuff that we're going to talk about, right. if they create those kind of games and those kind of offerings and show it and say, this is not coming to PC. This is coming to the Xbox. They're going to bring people to the fucking kitchen. That's my point. They got to bring people into the kitchen. Bring they them into the kitchen, the kitchen first. Show them yeah. the food, you know? Yes. Get them all excited. You smell that shit? That's not just mozzarella cheese. That's seven cheese blend. That's what's cooking. I'm yeah. on one end. Yeah. And you can only play it here at Microsoft. So Multi-course me, meal, desserts coming after, you know, we got all this yeah. stuff lined up. I say cheese because ketogenic diet. Yeah, I'm just saying, though, like, I, I know you guys are saying, I know it's a positive thing, but I don't feel like they're bringing us to the kid. I, br- I feel like they're bringing us to the bathroom, okay? I feel like every time Microsoft <laughs> says something, they're crapping all over us, because I swear, yes, you, we want games to say you brought studios. Yes, studios will lead into games, but the problem is you haven't proven that you're going to finish a game. You cancel how many games are delayed oh, games. If you can't even yeah, prove that true. here's a game, I could care less about a studio. You paid... For expensive studios, what did Rare do lately? What has Rare been doing that actually was successful right now that was really good? You know what I mean? Rare Replay, man. That, Tell me you don't like Rare Replay. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't. But it's a, <laughs> do you, I don't. Do you get, do you I don't play it either. Shut do you, down. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, do you bought, the studio, the names, the big budget, doesn't matter. Rare had a big name at one point. Doesn't do anything for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. So what what is the point of these studios if you don't have games to back it up? Studios is great. I'm all for them getting studios, but that can't be your special announcement. Hey, guys, I have a studio you guys heard of, but you don't know if they're going to make a game. We're not going to announce any games for them, Let's but just look. they're here. Before we stab them in the heart, you know, we've been stabbing Microsoft in the heart for the last three it's years. It's a jab. It's not really – it's just a jab. I'm just jabbing. Yeah, it's just a little, I, little I, pokey I think, poke, I think you know? That, that, Wake them up that, a bit. Goodwill is on their side right now. Yeah, uh, they don't have Don Matrick working at Microsoft anymore, completely destroying what the Xbox 360's legacy was by saying yeah. we're always online. Yeah. If you if you can't afford, you know if you don't want the Xbox One, we have a console for it. It's called 360. They, they completely changed everything uh, with under new management, and uh, I think that new management has rectified the issue. I think that they're working on the issue. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. I'm sorry, guys. I'm hungover. Leader of the Xbox. Phil Spencer. Bill Spencer. Phil Spencer. It was, it was coming. He's uh, Your said boy, on Phil. numerous. Yeah, I love Phil Spencer, man. I do too. I think he's awesome. He's, he's at slowly exploding, though. It's like every time you look at him, it's like you press play on the button and watch a human explode. He used to be a really slim guy. I don't know what kind of money they're paying him, but he's eating really good. Cut down on the <laughs> fucking cars, Phil. But he's obviously uh, <laughs> he's he's noticed the problem. He's talked about it openly that Microsoft has an issue with exclusives. And I think that every facet of what Microsoft has done wrong so far, he's been trying, slowly trying to rectify it. Now, if you look at the, the history of what Microsoft was compared to what it is now, the Always Online is gone, the DRM is gone, the digital games aspect is gone. Now they have this uh, Xbox Game Pass, which is leaps and, and bounds above anything the PlayStation has to offer. And, and yeah. to be totally honest, if I had one console and I paid $10 a month 
for a Netflix style uh, thing, there would be nothing that could even compete. I don't even think you can get this kind of value on uh, on Steam. I think that ten dollars a month for hundreds of games that you can just download completely and play them all the way through is an incredible thing. I think that uh, the whole aspect of them working with uh, new studios and, and and acquiring studios, getting their own exclusives in order, their house of exclusives in order, and then on top of that having the most powerful hardware when it comes to the home space. I think these are all gigantic, gigantic pluses for Microsoft's side. So it's really hard. It's, it's easy to say from from the outset, I want to play games now. I want every I want all the good shit now. But when you start from a vantage point where you're so far behind the curve of your competition, uh, you don't have any great exclusives. Uh, the console is lacking behind the competition, the Xbox mm-hmm. One. Everything is, you know, in disarray. And you you're slowly building toward positivity the way that Phil Spencer's done. He's turned everything around. And, and if we look at his legacy at this point at Microsoft from, from what Don Matrick was, is a 180 turn. And so if, and it hasn't really been a lot of mistakes, to be totally honest. Yeah. He's not the guy developing the games. He's not the one who goes into the studios and, and makes the final call on which games are going to be good and which aren't. The developers are out there doing it. So he's now pulled in new talent. He's got these, uh, he, they showed 50 games. Many of them are going to be console and PC exclusives. I think Microsoft is really now on the road to recovery. I th- Speaking of recovery, I need some more water. Uh, but I think right now they're on, on the path to succeed. Yeah, well, you know, it's only so much water can do to bourbon. Recovering from that bourbon. Yeah. I, I know this is going to sound weird, but I personally think that the Xbox... X, Xbox One X, maybe they may have screwed up making it in the fact that I think it's too powerful in the sense that it's too powerful for this time period because what's going to happen right now? They're behind. For the 4K thing, basically. They're behind right now, right? In sales. So they're going to find a huge, they're going to have a huge problem when it's time for next generation. Why? Because now you're going to have to now convince people that this one is better than the Xbox One X. So now they're going to have to try to get people to buy the new one. Yeah. And because you already announced you're not going to separate the games, right? You're not. You, this ex, or, everything Xbox or One or X. Hector, they're going to have to separate the games. There's <laughs> two, th- two things they can do. Now, you, you've already said that the Xbox One X is too powerful. Microsoft yes. initially, uh, Phil Spencer said that this is going to be for the Xbox One games only. Uh, we're not going to leave anyone behind. Obviously, that mantra and that yeah. motto is being left in the dust. Uh, uh, during E3 this year, which of course we haven't talked about any of our topics yet, because yeah. hey, Beastly Thoughts is so fucking great. But uh, he did <laughs> mention that they're working on multiple Xbox consoles for the future. Yes, not so, just one. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Now, if, if if they come out with new consoles or at least announce one with a new mantra that the Xbox One X will also be able to play these games. So these are Xbox One games, but the Xbox One X can play the X the X games. Maybe they uh, release a new console just called the X. See, that's the thing though. That's gonna. I and think it can play the Xbox One X games. The Xbox One X can play the X games as well, right? So they might be a toned down version, slightly lower frame rate possibly, uh, but it could still play them at you know. 4K resolution or checkerboard resolution, but the Xbox One definitely can't do it. That's how you give new life to the Xbox One X. They don't want a Sega Saturn situation. Man, they don't want a Sega Dreamcast. I'm just gonna say situation. that this Sega. I feel like that's it's gonna be like a that's what uh, hardware fatigue. I feel like they're the route they're taking more in place. I feel like they're. I keep forgetting how old you are. The that's fatigue. Dirty. You're old. That's what like, know that. <laughs> <laughs> when you say ancient. that, I was thinking right away. As you're saying that, I'm like, I just started thinking about Sega. I'm like, Sega just got fatigued. Sega CD, Sega Saturn, Sega 32. Oh, yes. man. Remember when Sega X? made consoles? They, yeah. they had all these additions to consoles. They, this one's better than the last one. And they, they no had, they had <laughs> a problem showing people that this one is better than the next one. And when you have a problem showing that, you lose sales and hardware. And like that's their bread and butter right now. It's the sales and hardware. They're actually that's what they they try to live off with. That's what they're hoping on. They're banking on Xbox One X sales, and mm-hmm. it's not the sales that they thought it was gonna be. That's why they still have not announced where they're at yet in Xbox One sales. They never will. Yeah, uh, that, they, they probably won't announce that. that. They're, they're, they're millions yeah. and millions and millions behind. I think that they're less than fifty percent of the PlayStation sales. PlayStation Four has already hit eighty million. 
Yeah. So, I mean, they're less than 50% of that, so they're probably sitting in like 36, 37. And it's not even like million. the Xbox One has ever been selling badly. It's just that Sony's been doing so much better that to them it just doesn't look good. Like, they're just like, we just, if we release sales um, numbers, I, probably. I, I do but... another show with a, another group of great guys, and I talk to these guys about it quite a bit. And, and they, you know, Brian Rabbit and, and Wilson, shout out, uh, they don't really feel that the Xbox One X being Play Anywhere, that Play Anywhere initiative mm -hmm. has hurt the console. To me, that has been a huge uh, yeah. <laughs> disparaging uh, factor uh, for people not playing the Xbox One. Because, you know, I have Xbox One games on my PC. I got a, 10, uh, uh, a, a 1060 in here. Yep. You know, I, 16 gigs of RAM. It can play anything on my PS4 or Xbox One as far as quality and, and, and surpasses them easily, right? But they don't think that the Play Anywhere initiative uh, has hurt the Xbox One console, and, and they think it's all good. I understand that you know egalitarian thought process that everyone should be equal. Everyone should be able you should be able to play on your phone if you want to play your Xbox. I understand some people think it, it, it's it's good, but when it comes to business, Microsoft has competed with itself, and 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 these guys see it as Microsoft owns Windows, and Microsoft you know they have their Windows Store, and it's always a good you know. But to me. That aspect of what Microsoft has done when it comes to their games to be able to play on your PC has really, really, really hurt the Xbox One brand and, and the sales. I think that they probably have millions more Xboxes sold if you weren't able to, you know, put play everything on break. PC. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, playing on your PC is going to be better on your PC. As soon as a person plugs in their controller, it's the same experience or better than you have in the Xbox. So they're really they're, they're cannibalizing themselves. Yeah, definitely. And I think What's that they the will point? Be, I think they will be doing. Yeah, that's my that's my whole point. I talked to the guys on Revolver, and they're like they don't understand what I'm saying. They they think it's you know totally fine. And yeah. It's justifiable because Microsoft is competing with Microsoft. But I'm like, okay, yeah. if you want to if you want to have a console and you want it to be viable against its competition, you've got to have a reason for people to buy that console. Yeah. And if you say that every game on this console, the exclusives are going to be on your computer, you never have to buy the console, and they don't understand. Yeah, it. yeah. the like, only reason I could even yeah. see people sticking with Xbox over PC, just like that justifiability, is just because maybe people just don't want to play a PC, or they just want to, you know, stick on their living room couch, play with a controller. But you can do that with a PC. That's a thing a lot of people apparently don't really realize is that you know you can play a PC exactly like a console. You can basically do that. So exactly what is the point of an Xbox One? People will still probably want to play on it anyways, whether that's where their friends are or who knows. But yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because Xbox is more of a brand right now than it is just even a console. Yeah. That's what they're trying to build it out for the future. Well, so it's Last it's point for Beastly, from what you're saying though, is um, that just backs up what you're saying is... A lot of people, how many games, since you guys are not new, yeah, new good to will PC, but good you guys point, are playing more PC, right? Now, so, uh, yes. when you guys no, play I play PC, PS4 exclusively. I got a have, Steam Link last night, came in the mail yeah. yesterday. Fucking amazing. Oh, well, my God. I wish I could get it's one like, for so cheap. How many yeah. games that have you played already on console that you're replaying on a PC, though? That you're uh, rebuying on the PC? I, it happens. Well, I, right? I, have the, I have The Witcher. I have Destiny 2. It, but uh, it happens, correct? That that's the thing. You usually tend to buy more than one copy, and that's the thing that Microsoft losing those sales because there's people are like, hey, oh, you know, I haven't played this in a while. You know, let me download on my PC and play it. Like those are what they're losing when they do that. You're totally it, right. Yeah. Be, they're losing the the double sales or because they they there's sometimes that for all the stuff used to release later on or there's things that they it would come out on PC like, oh. and be be its own. Separate sale. Exactly. Yeah. Now yeah. let's play anywhere that you could. It's the same purchase. It's one. It's one sale. You're you're losing those people because there's a lot of people to do that. That will buy it again. They're cannibalizing later. themselves yeah. on both ends is what you're saying. Yeah. On both and it, ends, the console space and the PC space. Those sales that they would have gotten by releasing a PC version of a game are immediately free for people who yeah. didn't play anywhere. For example, if I don't have my you know Xbox anymore, I sold it. I got rid of it. Then your ex? No, I didn't get it rid of it. I'm saying I'm giving an example. Oh. I'm saying if I, I never know what's happening with you for weeks. Wait, which ex? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> which ex no, are we talking about? I, the Xbox X or the Hector's X? The X. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of all my exes, but uh, <laughs> oh my. Well, I mean that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Then you can still like, oh, let me play it on a PC. Why? Because I can play it anywhere. 
I have it's my copy, but I guarantee I wouldn't end up buying it again. I'm like, well, I feel like playing again. I'll buy it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you lose on sales like that. I just think overall it cuts into your own sales, like you said, basically. So I completely agree. Uh, real quick, Hector, as I look at you and, yeah. I, and I dream of how I'll be in about forty or fifty more pounds. Show uh, <laughs> the audience your bicep. Now, yeah. Now turn it. My, my wife's watching. Ooh, so oh, my God, Hector. Hey, I have one of those too, Kate. This room it's is getting warm. Oh, my it's God. It's underneath this. <laughs> look, look at that. That's so fucking awesome. I remember, heck, I remember how you were when I first met you. You were never out of shape. But uh, what you've done is really, really incredible, man. And yeah, I admire dude. it. And I think it's astonishing yeah. what a person can do when they put their mind hey. to it. Yeah, awesome. look, look at you, Beastly. I see you're going to get there pretty soon, yo. You're going to be having Kate touch you to your square and circle bond all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it won't be. You know, God, I'm, I'm tired of this shit, right? I, Kate, Kate still brushes. Please leave that shirt on, too, when you two have, uh, you know, quiet time together. <laughs> Shut up, Robbie. Hey, look, <laughs> Please do it. Kate, Kate, you know, our daughter's 18 months old. And so whenever Kate... Oh, that makes you know, it even weirder. <laughs> Shut up! It's not weird. I like to watch this stuff. But Kate, you know, she's Sorry, been doing the keto diet with me. And uh, Kate's lost like 15 pounds. She looks amazing. Her like six pack and all that stuff, her little V, everything is so beautiful. And whenever she takes off her shirt, our daughter says, Booby! And starts laughing because she wants to go eat. She did that shit to me. <laughs> Heck, she did it to me, man. What the? <laughs> I mean, these movies got hair on them, and she still said it. She said, "Booby, I said, oh, you ain't my fucking daughter." I'm dead. <laughs> oh my god. I'm mean, yeah, sorry, man. That's I'm sorry. Just that's picturing not... that. <laughs> I'm cutting back the carbs, heck. It's, it's coming. It's happening. Damn. Also, Damn. real quick for anyone who just tuned in, if you're wondering why you can't see my webcam, I had technical difficulties. Anyways, continue. Uh, his webcam right, so saw saw Beastly and and then he saw the, the, the whole booby joke and it just broke. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm so I, happy I, I, everyone I'm really, tuned I'm really in for this. I'm regretting not being able to see you, uh, Robbie, because you know you're such an important part of what we do, man. Uh, I'm just here. Thank to God it. we have such a handsome co-host. <laughs> So he, he's double the handsome today. Look at his hair, muscles, yeah. fucking biceps. Oh, biceps. yeah, you, you guys right, are back in that for sure. You have me here, too, so thanks. Oh. Uh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump into our news. We just totally uh, and, forgot and about it. And kind of go hit by hit. Uh, Xbox One's latest update includes the ability to fast start games. Announced at E3, which allows users to start any game up to twice as fast as before. This is really, to me... More in, in line with what Phil Spencer's been doing to make the Xbox One the best place, place to play. Now, it's not the best place to get the best games because right now PlayStation has the exclusives and that's not something Xbox can compete with. But when you're talking about multi plat mm -hmm. experiences and just the, user, the usability of the console to be able to start a game twice as fast, it's something that after you do for a long time, I would think, and you go back to another console and play, you're going to feel it. so little things like that to me are, are really intriguing for what xbox is doing for the future man what do you guys think well i guess like i'm gonna i i guess i i can no longer do number two while a game loads i have to do number one you know what i mean that's pretty much <laughs> it's a little quicker than enough. before <laughs> i'll have less time i guess I'll... <laughs> uh, yeah I, to me you know i, I like oh my God. I like some things fast and some slow. You know, I got five kids, so you know, you got shots. But uh, when it comes to loading a video game, I think that that's uh, really awesome and uh, something that's intuitive that'll help everybody who's out here playing games. Thanks to everybody who's watching us right now on Twitch. All right, the next bit of news, Nintendo has reassured investors this week that its full 2018 lineup has yet to be revealed, citing more announcements from the company on products to release by the end of this year. This comes after Nintendo's stock being on a steady decline ever since their E3 pr presentation, which was lacking in big announcements. Uh, their stock, what, dropped? It didn't say anything about their stock. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you guys think about this little bit of news? It makes me wonder what they have, because I remember last year, after E3, I remember they had a direct... <clears throat> Excuse me. And they had um, they announced like Doom for the Switch, Wolfenstein 2, and obviously Doom came out like two months later. So maybe we'll see something like that. I mean, who knows? We could see some big third party thing. Uh, they'll probably have, I'm sure, some direct in like a month or two from now. You know, for this fall, it, it could be just something small. But yeah, I mean, it could be really cool, or it could Listen, be. 
So if Nintendo were to come out with some big games that people are still playing and still enjoying, if they were to say to hey, look, Destiny 2 is coming out. I was going to say Destiny 2 on the Switch. I was just about if, to say if that. They were saying, if they would say that, oh, we're, we got a Call of Duty or a Battlefield coming to the Switch, it's graphically not going to be the be same nuts. contemporaries. Oh, yeah. Look, look, I mean, Fortnite, of course, it plays on a toaster. But on the Switch, it plays to me just as good. And you can play against people on the Xbox. So, I mean, it's really, really slick with this yeah, console. PS4. Oh, yeah, well, 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 I don't know what, you know, I love, play, I love PlayStation. Clearly um, you do by the conversation we had earlier <laughs> about that shirt. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, Nintendo has got a great chance to, to do really good things. If they, uh, they have so many uh, indies. Like if you go on the Switch and, and if you look at, I was looking at it yesterday. I bought a, a 128, 120 gig SD card for my Switch. Mm -hmm. And when you look, at, you know, at their games and you want to go through and pick like a triple A AAA kind of experience, it's all Nintendo exclusives. And that's a good thing because you can only get yeah. Nintendo exclusives at Nintendo products. But I yeah. would like to see more and more triple uh, A multiplat type experiences. So hopefully they announce more. And uh, obviously that's what they intend to do. So that's really good news. All right, yeah. Fallout seventy six doesn't indicate future BSG. What is that? BSG? Bethesda Game Studios. Yeah. The studio. Thanks a lot, Robbie. I think Bethesda that's, that's Game sorry. Studio titles, <laughs> getting multiplayer titles, according to studio uh, lead Todd Howard. Oh man, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so sad. I mean, I don't think this yeah. doesn't indicate this having is the only multiplayer, one? but. Um, basically, he's just saying this doesn't mean like every game going forward we're going to have multiplayer in it. I think that's what he means. I'm pretty confident. Like he just means well, that. We'll that that's fine. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> they they got you know the Elder Scrolls Online, and and Kate yeah. and I really enjoyed that. You know, uh, periodically we played that thing for about a, a few days before we quit and jumped onto something else. Yeah. yeah. But uh, having this Fall '76 in that world to me is awesome. You know, it's going to be just a group of. A dozen people in in one server, kind of you know foraging and, and experiencing the world. If they can do something like that for an actual Elder Scrolls game and not the online game, I think that's all we would need. Because to me, Bethesda games have always stood at the top of the pile as uh, single player experiences. Yeah. Their oh, yeah. world build world building is better than bar none, pretty much anybody out there. Very few developers are able to craft these kind of worlds and these singular stories that are so expansive and changing. And so to me, to, to change that dynamic of what Bethesda has been into like a multiplayer type of experience would kind of be antithetical to what they've done, uh, you know, over these shit 20 years uh, of developing. So uh, yeah. I think Fallout 76 is a great move. I think it's a, it's a good idea uh, to allow people who've played Fallout 3, Fallout 4, uh, and, and talk to their friends about the experiences that they've had in the game. You know, man, I drank so many Nuka Colas, right? But to actually have a friend there, right, <laughs> mm -hmm. and have someone go through that experience with you, a la Destiny or a la uh, these other kind of uh, co-op type of experiences, uh, is going to breathe new life into in, into the game. And if it works out well, they may implement it in the future. But the way I see it now, it's not something that's paramount. I think that the thing that's made Bethesda so amazing in my mind is their singular stories. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be online. You can sit there, have a beer, have some bourbon, and and play. <laughs> Can't forget the bourbon. Yes. And, and, and enjoy it by yourself and walk away feeling refreshed and revitalized and excited about the world. So, I'm sorry. It's a diatribe, and the, the alcohol is still surging in my veins. Oh, yes. That's what makes Bethesda Game Studios games amazing is the immersion, is the world building, the story, just the things you can find off the beaten path. That's what I love about those games, and I like that they're doing something new. They're, you know, they're taking a chance. They're trying something they've never done before. Follow with friends, you know. It could be yeah. awesome, or it might kind of suck. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. But uh, I think they're yeah. definitely gonna put that out there, and they're, that studio is probably thinking, you know, we'll see how this goes, and then who knows? Maybe that'll affect Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six if they have any kind of multiplayer. I don't know if they will, but yeah. But yeah, no, it's interesting. I think that's good. I mean, I think that. I feel like the other fallouts where you're training, you know, and now all of a sudden you got to do the same thing you did before, but now you're going to be going against people or with people. Um, I think that will add a whole new element to the same as that game. So I think that that that's pretty cool, like to switch it up like that. I think that's a completely it makes it like a brand new shit. game. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, yeah. It, to me, 
to me, it's like this, right? I, and we've all enjoyed plenty, plenty of Bethesda games over the years. It's always been our experience, and to be able to like reach through the 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 screen and grab a friend and pull a hand to it with us. To me, that's the thing. Now, if if it's so close to like the Elder Scrolls Online that kind of dynamic, it won't feel like a real Bethesda experience, mm, right? Because Elder Elder Scrolls Online, while it does maintain the the, the aesthetic and it does look like an Elder Scrolls game when you play it the way that the stories are crafted the way that it feels when you see all these people doing things takes you out of that experience and so when Todd Howard was talking about uh, Fallout 76 it's going to be like 12 people you know it's going to be tons of different servers different rooms private rooms Mm -hmm. and and you'll be able to you know build your own place and and no matter what server you go to your stuff is going to be there and it's not going to just be a bunch of just random assholes running around you know, tearing things down and burning things down, it's not going to feel like it. it won't feel so different from the world that we've already experienced. To me, that was a really sound decision. And and hopefully it, it proves well that, you know, they're able to keep the, I guess, the spirit of what Fallout is in Fallout 76. Well, thing is that most of us, since we all have like a mixture of consoles and like we I all got PC everyone, stuff, man, except the wait. Xbox One X. I, I just couldn't do it. I, so I let anybody dumb enough. Yo, to do these that. new games coming out, man. We all we all got to try it out, play against each other, with each other. I definitely would like to experience that with you guys, whether it's the Fallout seventy six. Oh yeah, I mean, we, we, we all should get in that. That's gonna be Anthem, awesome. We're like, playing games together now, anyway. Oh, yeah, uh, Anthem and, and stuff like that. So yes. many games that we got to yeah. jump Fallout on there and stream Especially together, with the so. beta. We should definitely do that on PC and stuff, we're, we're going. To, we're going to get the Beastly Thoughts Twitter. I mean Twitter. Uh, Twitch. Twitch. Page, you know, uh, and we're all going to be on there playing together. I don't know if it'll be once or twice or three times a week. Whenever we can. Uh, I don't really play games with the Revolver guys, unfortunately. They're so busy. Like, they're at Guardian Con and they're, you know, here and there. And you know, whenever I'm, I'm looking for someone to play games with, yeah. They're never available. And so you guys are more down to earth and, oh, yeah. and more more my speed. And we play like the same kind of stuff. And it's not all Destiny. Mm. And, you know, even though Kate and I are fucking loving Destiny 2 right now, which I, it's so strange. Yeah, just waiting for content here, for that game. And I'll be back into it too. Yeah, I mean, but we haven't done the raids. We've only done one raid in Destiny 2. It's like, oh, there are three now. And, you know, our light level is up. We've been doing our, our, our milestones every week. or like at six, 366 power right so we're excited to to see how far we can go and we want to try these raids and do some things but i want to get with you guys and it doesn't have to be destiny of course it can be anything uh golf of friends you can play you know new i do uh, have that uh, game yeah battle, we could battle do that. royale games you can golf of friends is so fucking great yeah i haven't even played it i oh, thought it during the uh, steam sale though so but yeah uh so if people listening and, and watching the show know very soon we're going to figure that out and get our dates together oh yeah but we can Play, and it might change. It might be a different day each week. It might be, a, you know, might be the same. Who knows? We oh, don't yeah. really discuss uh, Especially it. with me, I'm always, like, I'm streaming basically every single day, playing all kinds of different stuff. So, yeah, it makes sense. It's yeah, just kind of naturally I, didn't works. You, didn't you go back to Destiny last night? Me? Uh, No, I wasn't playing it I yesterday. It. Wasn't it a tweet I saw from you saying you were going over to, what were you playing? Oh, no, I was playing uh, Overwatch and PUBG. I went back to Overwatch because oh, it's been PUBG, a while since PUBG. I played that. I knew it was one of those Yeah, and that too. PUBG. I haven't yeah. that in a while. So it'll be exciting to see. All right. Next bit of news. A message stated for some players in GTA Online that GTA 6 will be released in 2019 has been proven false this week by Rockstar Games, stating that this was a hoax uh, by the use of modders, and there's been no official announcement or statement from Rockstar. Uh, GTA 6 is going to be amazing. Uh, and it probably will be. Yeah, that game's inevitable. Like it's like, duh, we're gonna get it one day. Like it's a real Not game. GTA Five. It came on PS3 and Xbox 360. Like, so of we're course, there's gonna be a GTA Six. Like obviously, yes, there will be one. Probably I mean, not 2019 though. And, and and GTA Five is still like one of the top selling games every month. Yeah, like there are no rush you to know, release that. They got Red Dead Two coming this year. Like 2020 or 2021 probably for GTA Six. It'll, it'll be the X, the X, and the PS Five. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know how someone could do that, but it's exciting news and, and more than likely is kind of fucking true. All right, continuing on. Todd Howard this week has stated that Starfield may be coming to the current generation of consoles in addition to the next one. It's based on release timing for which generations of hardware the game will appear on. So 
Interesting, because we remember it. I don't know anything about this game other than the, the little 10 second image of space. Who cares? It's set in space and it's from Bethesda. I don't care. I'm sold. <laughs> like, it's going to be fucking dope. But what is what is the last game that they created where you, you're fighting those little dark hollows? Um, I have it in there. I'm trying to think of the name of it. What do you mean? It's dark not the last game that they, that they launched, but it came out, I think, last year. Is it from hmm. Prey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it, 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 Prey, it was a, that was one of those, right? Um, yeah. I didn't like that game. I didn't, I didn't like the way it felt. I haven't like played it. Moves. I'd like to give it a go, though. Yeah. Well, well, pray that you never do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is uh, kind of a, a big talking point nowadays, and I think at some point the backlash or the pressure might force Sony to do something else about it, but. Todd Howard has called out Sony's lack of crossplay with other platforms, stating that Fallout 76 will not feature crossplay because, quote, Sony is not as helpful as everyone would like them to be, end quote. Man, it never yeah. ends lately. Ooh, like, that's pretty uh, harsh. First there was oh, the Fortnite no, thing, then there's the Minecraft thing, now there's <sighs> this. Like, Sony, I, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm on the opposite it side. It makes them look I, so I, bad. They're, 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 they're winning, Robbie. I, no, you're right. do it they don't care. You you're, you're right. You can't. Here's the thing, right? Microsoft did the same thing last generation. People don't want to admit that. They did the same thing last generation. It's a business, right? If you are dominating sales, right, and everyone ha is playing on your console, why would you give them an out for the people that are on Xbox, right? For people on Xbox, so they and they're like, the man, so I really want to play with my friends. You know, I'm going to go buy a PS4. If you don't understand how many people do that, that they end up buying both consoles. Everybody so does. Xbox, that's why if you give them an out, I'm sorry to say this, you're giving them away a reason not to go to your console. You're giving a, away a console. Uh, for if, what if you, purpose? If you look at it this way, and, 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 and not too nerdy, I swear to God, I 100% agree with you. I think that's very astute and, and, and very logical. Uh, to me, Microsoft would have never done this ever in a million years uh and, and kind of microsoft went the opposite direction with the play anywhere type of uh idea they're hurting their console sales and sony is doing the exact opposite if you want to play you know uncharted or if you want to play you know uh the last of us or any other you know god of war you ain't played it on a computer right you have to play it on the playstation and so for them to give like like hector said if, if you give uh the competition an opportunity if you give gamers an opportunity to play with your base without buying into the the brand or buying into the idea, I think it's just not yeah. mm -hmm. it's not economically sound for a business. And I remember there was a statement. It sounds recently. mean what Sony's doing, like the way they, they talk. This was on Fox News. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I watch Fox News because it's the only place I can see Hannity and Tucker Carlson. But <laughs> this is actually on Fox Business. They were talking just, about yeah. you know how uh, the, you know. Microsoft and Nintendo are playing well together because Fortnite had come out. This is right after E3. Right. And I couldn't believe it. And they were like, PlayStation, Sony is just not playing nice. Yeah. And they're not going to give anyone an opportunity to, to join into this fun. I was like, it sounds really mean when you say it. But if you were Sony, if yeah. you were a part of the company, you would say, hell no. Yeah. Why would I do we, that? Have, we have 80 million consoles, so we don't need this small fraction of the, of the base. Our base loves us. Our base enjoys what we're doing. Let's keep our base happy until all their friends dry up and say, hey, look, I got to buy a place. Yeah. And the only problem is it's just so anti-consumer looking. Like, it just makes them look bad. But there was that statement recently from, I think it was the Sony Interactive Entertainment, like, ex-president or whatever. He said that yeah. the reason Sony doesn't like crossplay is because they don't like the idea of someone buying something on an Xbox and playing it with someone on PlayStation or whatever. Like, they don't like that. Correct. Yeah. So obviously, it, it's about money. Like, which is It is no about doubt. money. Every like, business is about money. Yeah, if I had 100%. a lemonade stand over here and all I had was regular lemonade and some bitch across the street put some raspberry flavoring Premium in hers. Premium lemonade. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I have to go get my own particular flavor. Some and bitch. Shit. Yeah. The, the irony in all this is this, right? I don't care about... It makes sense with the Xbox and, and PlayStation 4. If you're arguing about that, fine. But the, the Switch, the PC, 
cell phones, why the hell do you want to play those devices that go against each other? You'll yeah. get destroyed against people with PCs. And it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> PC with, versus oh, I mobile, want to play especially. With everyone else. Oh my you try God. playing on a Switch, right, with the difference in frames and go against someone else oh, from PC Xbox, or Xbox? Yeah, and, you and you're going to get destroyed. Perfect example, Fortnite, that. 60 like, frames on the Xbox, 30 frames on the Switch. Is it only like, 30 frames on Switch? A, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a huge and that's when I'm like, oh, I have, I have, I got two kills, but hey, I got two kills on a Switch, so I feel great even though I died. It would have like, been six if I was on the Xbox. What is the point? Like, I, the, the thing is, people are like, oh, well, then we could like play together. Who the hell cares? Like, like to be honest, you either get the system everyone else has. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure yeah. the people at this point in age, it's not like it just came out. People already either have all the Xbox, has Xbox or PlayStation because they got the games that their friends have. They got yeah. the system their friends had already. It's Max. over with. It's already decided which side they're on or what they got. And it's either now's the time where they usually buy the second console or they decide to get an addition to what they have. And, and now you want to reach out. Exactly. So, like, why would Sony miss out on those sales? Because someone wants to all of a sudden play together with their friends. That makes no sense. And yeah. people just in this country and, like and, and another another aspect of it is this and, and why I think that Nintendo and Microsoft could be making a huge uh, mistake for the future is because once that precedent is set, it's really yeah. hard to step back from it. Uh just okay. say for instance Nintendo ends up winning this console generation. I'm not saying it's not possible because the, the Switch is just selling they're gonna outsell the Xbox by the end of the year. So Nintendo Switch right. is selling like unbelievably well if Nintendo Switch continues to sell the way it's doing and, and comes up and can, starts competing with PlayStation and leaves the Xbox brand behind they'll probably step away from this if Nintendo goes on in the future and has another console that's just as popular and, and they're out doing the PlayStation and the Xbox they're not going to want to continue with this kind of plan they're only doing it now because they want to include people in the Nintendo space because they're trying to win once you have the win once you're holding the candle in your hand Nobody cares. You're not going to slow down. You're not going to give someone else the candle. You're going to keep holding that shit. And, and like PlayStation, if they were to do this now, it's kind of like uh, uh, backwards compatibility or anything that people have had in the past that they're pissed off about not having now. Mm -hmm. Like PlayStation, I actually put Mega Man 8, I don't, I don't know why, in my PS4 uh, <laughs> earlier in the week. Couldn't tell you and why. I was like, this thing, this thing doesn't play PS1 games. And I was like, well, the PlayStation 2 and... PlayStation 3 was able to even at least play PS1 games. What the fuck, Sony? Sony, what the it, fuck? It, they took a step back. And so for Nintendo and Microsoft, for a future console that could potentially be winning a console generation, people who want to play with their friends on Nintendo, the precedent's been set. If Microsoft's winning one day, and they're like, man, I can play with Nintendo, all of a sudden, ah, not, a, not, a, not allowed, unavailable. And you're like, what the fuck, Microsoft? <laughs> this precedent's already been set. Exactly. They're doing it now to compete with Sony. And, and they're not going to say it, but Nintendo and Microsoft are looking at the top of the hill, and Sony's there with these big, shining, golden balls, just kind of spinning around and throwing... Dangling those balls around. Yeah. Look at my balls. Just, yes. And, and they want to do anything they can. They're like, you know, we're losing. Let's hold hands and try to, you know, combat this yeah. giant. Get the, the goodwill the and uh, make Sony yeah. look worse. But, but the thing is, Sony has been doing this, and they've been surviving. They've been doing this every single time. You talk about backwards compatibility. They did this for every single console generation. People forget. They think, oh, PS2 is backwards compatibility. PS2, no, you're, you're forgetting. It's the first iteration of them were that. And then right after the first iteration, mm -hmm. they bring out another model that no longer has backwards compatibility. They wiped it like that every single time where you can't oh, yeah. play backwards compatibility. That's why like you only had like, the... The certain like 60 gigabyte model. The 60 that gigabyte that. PS3 or, could the, play the PS2 games. Yeah. All PS3s could play the PlayStation 1 games. Yeah. They never took that uh, that ability away. But the PlayStation 2, yeah. uh, the 60 gigabyte PS3 was able to play that. It was kind of a special model, uh, and it's been ubiquitous against the PlayStation yeah. 2. PlayStation 2 played all PS1 games. So to me, they really <laughs> took a, a big step back with the PlayStation 3 not being able to play the PlayStation 2 games well, unless you bought a that is particular model. Yeah. Not really. all the models of PS2. Because when they slim down again, every time they slim, yeah, the they slim, take that away. Yeah, it's fucking slim right there. Yeah, every time they slim it down, bitch. they pull that away on purpose. And that's that's what they do. Like, 
And I, I, that's why I'm like, at this point in generation, we're getting closer to the next generation. So why are people complaining about this? Pretty soon, they're going to be on a new console, and you're like making them worry about, about whatever what they think, want What do you think, uh, Not Too Nerdy? Do you think that the what are the, what are the prospects, or what do you think is the probability that we'll see a PlayStation console that has backwards compatibility again? I have a ton of, of PlayStation games. Mm. Uh, I mean, a lot of them. And it's like, I would love to be able to put them in there and see them. You remember the PS2, how PlayStation 1 games, you could do like a smooth rendering of the game. And like I played Castlevania Symphony of the Night on there and it would uh, it decrease loading times and do all these things, right? Do you think that that's out of the door? Do you think it's it's gone away forever? Do you think that maybe they're going to go to digital? Uh, you know, you'd be able to play the games you bought digitally as far as backup? Or do you think that it's not something they're really interested in? I think it depends yeah. on the next generation if they're going to have an questions. optical disk drive or not. If they don't have an optical disk drive or not, then like if they do have it, then yes, I think the next one will be backwards compatible right away because I feel like they're going to milk this PS4 dry. They're going to do they're going to bring it to the last moment. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where they're going to be like, "Oh, like in like 3 months we're releasing a PlayStation 5." Like it's going to be like a quick release on purpose so that they don't announce it so they can get as much sales as they can for PS4. So, and I think something like that, like, but don't worry, you can still play your PS4 games here. And it's going right. to entice people to buy the new one and you can still do that. That's uh-huh, if they uh-huh. keep the optical drive. If they decide not to do that, there's then, a real possibility they might not. Yeah, it might be a digital yeah. only future for so, the next console. So I don't no think clue. they're doing it yet, but especially with the technology that, the, you know, I think they're going to incorporate the the 4k blu-ray and like i think once they incorporate that stuff you should you'll have more memory in it um but i don't know they're gonna go yet not yet but uh you're 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 muted basically yeah I basically hear, what are you what are you doing <laughs> oh Nova, Nova brought me some water Nova, <laughs> you haven't seen these guys in ages come say hi say hi yeah, to everybody who's watching beastly thoughts i know of, uh hi, Nova's about to be eight years old she ain't three no more go do Whoa. a review <laughs> she ain't three no more <laughs> This is my thoughts on uh, the digital future, and, and it, it does sound really interesting uh, because on PlayStation, at least, and on Steam, everything is digital. Uh, the reason that I do digital on PlayStation is because I game share with Kate. Every game I buy, she's able to download on her PlayStation and play things together. It makes sense economically. But to go to a digital future for video games and have a Netflix type of design, to me, would be uh antithetical to first of all to people who like to collect firstly secondly for people who like to own things so when you watch netflix you don't feel like you're owning the movies you feel like you're leasing them you feel like you're just watching them yeah early. you're paying you're a premium watch to just watch whatever yeah. you want yeah. but some kind of experiences you actually will go out and buy a blu-ray for right you do mm-hmm. everyone does oh that was so good i saw it in the theaters oh guardians of the galaxy 2 blu-ray you know people you do that right and so to remove the prospect of gamers to say that this game made by this developer was so meaningful to me. Some people uh, thought that Hellblade was such uh, a deep and engrossing experience for people with mental illness that they wanted the physical version of the game. They didn't want just a digital version. They wanted to actually have something. And hold right. something I still have not played that game. I own it on Steam. I really what the hell's get... wrong with you? Sony just I don't know. I'm sorry. Something's wrong with me. Hey, Microsoft bought the developer. Well, I mean, I'll see myself know. out. <laughs> I think... For yeah. me, that future where everything goes digital is not going to work because some people like rooms full of shit. Not now, this room isn't full of shit anymore, but it used to. Oh, be not anymore. <laughs> That's good. To I had to get clean it up for the show, but <laughs> I, I like to collect stuff. There's lightsabers all around and, and fucking Buster swords. And, hey, there you hey, go. I, I, yeah, I mean seriously, Clementine's hat. Everything's here, and and some people like hey, to Kate. collect things some people like to have video games special editions and for for those people uh, all digital future that entire aspect of life will be completely wiped away and i don't think sony or microsoft or anyone who's serious about consoles is even considering moving in that direction See, and, and they'll give you the option i think mm-hmm. but i don't think that they're going to mandate it i agree that i think it's also like based on like internet and stuff like that like, I feel like the bandwidth for places, there's not enough internet speed to go digital only. People can't afford to yeah, download, we're, we're like, a, a 5 gigabyte or a 10 right. gigabyte or 40 gigabyte game. They'll spend a whole weekend doing that when it could have been playing the whole weekend, right? Yeah. But also, things like recently, they announced, like, the news of, you know, PlayStation Now. There's been games spotted that you could download the actual download game. Straight to your and, like, that's... Yeah. 
that's what I think for Sony is going to be the best future where you could download them. They give you like a library full of stuff that you could download and play or you could stream. You have the option to do one or the other. Yeah, yeah. And if that's mm-hmm. an option, then that will be more successful because the people that are worried about, hey, my internet isn't too quick. Um, I can't afford to, for it to lag behind and I can't play. Let me download it. Or people that just want to pick up and play a game or try it before they download it, they could go ahead and another, just stream. Another aspect, though, oh. that you're not thinking about is, like, think of Resistance. I know a lot of people are, probably don't remember Resistance, but Resistance is a PlayStation exclusive. I can't wait to see what they do uh, with the next one. But Resistance was very, very popular one. when it first came. Shut up, Robbie! I mean, I hope no, I hope there is, but I, I don't think there ever no, will be. Like, uh, Resistance is a great game. Basically, and, and, I'm not shitting uh, on Resistance. Calm down. <laughs> I think you are the resistance. No, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. That's going to come out right after Half Life 3, but go ahead. Um, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> I think Half Life 3 will be first. Okay, so I really do. Not you will see Half Life 3 before you ever see another resistance game. <laughs> oh, God! Really? Resistance 4. Calling it now. Out. That game is well, never coming out. I'm sorry. Check it out. Years ago, like my sons are 17 and 16. Years ago, when they were like 7 and 8, uh, they would play resistance online with me and kate because at the time kate and i we lived in ohio they were here and in georgia and, and we would you know have this like bonding moment we get together kind of old school halo style the four of us would go in there with these insane weapons and just shoot the shit out of each other and have a fucking blast and at some point those servers went down mm-hmm. that memory is completely gone like the skating rink i left their mom i met their mother at it's completely gone it's a fucking car dealership i won't ever go there and buy a car it'll be a bad decision just like the skating rink, but you guys get. Uh, my point is, at some point, if you go all digital, there is the potential of something happening in business, an acquisition, companies going bankrupt, anything happening to your digital purchases. And, and we see how licensing goes. Sony had a major issue in 2011 where they were down, place PSN was down for three months due to hacking. Oh and god, we that was brutal. Game. We couldn't play the I'll games that we I'll never forget that. We couldn't mm. play the games that we actually bought. Uh. So to completely forfeit your right to your purchase, like the games I buy digitally, they are mine. And I have, there's five PlayStation 4s in this house. So I'll be in the living room playing one and then I'll turn it off and I'll come in here. And then as I start up in, in here on the 60 inch 4K LG, It'll be an, uh, an uh, emblem pop up saying that you need to wait so we can validate your license. And I'm like, I understand what they're doing, but just that alone, it kind of freaks me out every time because the part of me that's a consumer is like, bitch, I paid for this ass. Right? Mm-hmm. Give me the ass that I paid for. Yeah. You can't leave till you give me what you owe me. So, right. you know, so I see that and I'm like, but mm-hmm. I bought this game and sometimes that freaks me out. And we've seen what's happened with. with video game companies sony is not impervious to uh you know stakes sega wasn't you know uh Ouya wasn't yeah. and oh so, my god Ouya. you remember Nobody remembers diablo Ouya. diablo <laughs> what you're talking about diablo 3 remember people yeah. could have played the game because the drm their you server went so down they couldn't they could oh, yeah. check in the game and because of that the brand new game that's fully downloaded you couldn't even play because it couldn't check in to say that you bought the game so, so, so yeah people, People who look at things in a logical way like that, I understand the ease of access to download a game. You know, you, you buy it right when it comes out or you preload it on your system. It's so convenient. But at some point, the lights go off. At some point, this company might not exist anymore. Can you guys imagine if 20 years ago, or it's, well, I guess 20 years ago, if we were so technologically advanced that the Sega Saturn had an online infrastructure and, and, and you were able to buy let's just say uh, Astel, the, the 2D uh, platformer, which is still a collector's item, it's an mm-hmm. amazing game. And you buy that game and, and you're able to play with friends and all this stuff digitally. Your purchase is nil. It's completely void at this point. You can't play it, you can't access it, you can't even fucking get online with this thing. Who's gonna pay for that if something were to go wrong with Sony? Oh, yeah. So to me, for people who want the digital only future, the digital revolution, you, you better be careful what you wish for because you might end up over the course of 20 years spending thousands and thousands of dollars only for it to all mean nothing at some point in the future. Yeah, it's true. I, I'm so smart they had nothing else to say. All right. <laughs> no, I, I agree. <laughs> what a great note to leave on. 
There you go. All right, so th- that's the news. Uh, we do have a list of games here, and it's so – this is so – this is really amazing, Robbie. I think you you listed. Oh, it's like I didn't know what you were gonna t- you were gonna say there. <laughs> How about yo? Let's do this, right? Let's go down the list. Every person talk about one game. Great. Like just favorite just go thing. Back each turn, each each one go back and uh, go back over pick, the game. Pick the ones that matter to you. Uh, we'll start yeah. with Microsoft uh, because Microsoft uh, they did go first this year, and and like like we said earlier, they had a ton of games to show. And immediately, a, a game that stands out for me because it was was the reason I bought an Xbox One, and it's probably let me think. It's still my my most prolific Xbox exclusive that I can't play anywhere else. It might be on PC now because you know they're stupid, but Ori <laughs> yep. and the Will of the Wisp. Oh, uh, this game for people who don't know. Uh, there's a, a genre of game called Metroidvania, which is kind of uh, the, the genre of the Metroid-style game with Castlevania of exploration and, mm-hmm. and secrets. And uh, this game, uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, which came out on the Xbox in 2014, looked visually astounding. It's hand-drawn, hand-animated. Every aspect of the game is beautiful. Uh, it, it harkens, in my mind, at least back to... Um, uh, the Secret of Nim, which is an old animated cartoon I used to watch as a child. Uh, but the game when I saw it, I was like, wow, this looks amazing. It's a, it's a side scroller that's drawn, hand drawn. It looks unbelievable. And then when I started to play the game uh, and realized that it really was a Metroidvania style game, it's not like you're playing Mario 3 and you're just, dun, dun, just going. It's not. You go places, you acquire abilities, you level up skills. This skill that you're doing here might actually help you uh, access a place that you couldn't get to before. So it's truly, in, in the most meaningful sense, a Metroidvania-style game. And so I beat that game. I didn't even do a review on it, which I reviewed Quantum Break. What the hell's wrong with me? Uh, but <laughs> I played that game. I beat it. It was the best experience I've ever had on my Xbox, uh, besides that time I laid my wife down on top of it. And what? Yeah, Ori and the Will of the Wisp is definitely, uh, it was one of the, the big shot. They didn't get as much, you know, airtime as a lot of the other, you know, the big AAA uh, kind of exciting games that a lot of people are there for. But when I saw that and I saw the new direction that they're going, with, you know, kind of taking something that was terrifying in the first game and making it endearing and, and, and bringing it and making it something that you love in the second one, I can't wait for that game. Did you guys see it and what you think of it? Oh yeah, I, I, mean, yeah, I like. Can't it. wait. I think that's good. I think the first one is good. Um, and yes, you can't get that on PC. You can. Yeah, you so, can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, of course. That, I own it on know, PC. Beastly, what are you doing, man? Say, You're messing up. If, it, if it's Xbox is on PC, like just from now on, that's how you think of it. Beastly, really <laughs> not gonna so get your shit together, Why Beastly. Do that? that game it's, is so great. Beastly, like we used to tell Joe, your old buddy Joe, you get My your brother? shit together. Your brother, I will write it to your brother. Get your shit together, Joe. Get <laughs> your shit together. Now we're telling Damn. you, Beastly, get it together. Yep. For me, come on, Joe. I would have to say, um, come on, without, Joe. <laughs> I'm actually I'm excited because uh, um, Sea of Thieves is actually going to have a game content. Like uh, I guess they call it uh, DLC. We'll but see. It's really gonna be a, I don't a know. Game I don't know about that. I'm, I'm completely being sarcastic. I'm not looking forward well, to seeing. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> really? No, it's it's actually the same one Beastly was talking about. Like, man. I think that out of all of them, like. To me, that's like I feel like it's a combination of like retro games with new school like graphics, and I think that that to me is why I like that game. Um, I I, I like oh, the first so, one. So it, your it's... game was Ori too. Yeah, so that's why the first thing like that I'll never you'll never hear me crap on that game. I think that it's beautifully done. Um, everything works well together. Music, everything just looks it's just like a beautiful Jesus made game. Experience. And the second one looks just as good if not better in the first one now that they know what people like Hell so I, i'm yeah. looking forward to see what it'll be like so. oh yeah it'll be even better you're gonna be playing that on pc huh not too nerdy. yeah i'll probably yeah, play yeah, it, not gonna like fuck up and play it on PC. xbox yeah. like beastly <laughs> nah, I, I might nah, i might i might play the xbox one x i might do that what? but the good thing is i could play it anywhere <laughs> look, look at the hey, space here like the cartoon version of... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time i played my xbox damn me either See if these beta will be game of the year for sure. Oh yeah, DJ. Yep. 
<laughs> Still adding content Vader. to that game. Yeah, it does not feel like a fair game. All right, game. so that was mine and, and, and Not Too Nerdy's first pick, Mr. Rob is cool. Or mm-hmm. as I say, Rob is cool. What do you think? What, what, what kind of caught your eye on the Xbox? And, and it's kind of amazing to me. I actually, I'm doing pretty good for a person who's nursing uh, lots of bourbon in their blood. You would never think that. Yeah, you're I'm barely up. making it through. No, man. you're holding up. You're holding good. We're good. Uh, for me, there's three games that really stand out to me that I was really excited for. Forza Horizon 4 looks friggin' incredible. My God. I'm black, right? Moving on. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Metro Exodus, because holy shit. Yes! That series is so underrated. Those games are phenomenal. I love 2033 and Last Light. Exodus looks even better. Uh, and then Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, because from software. Oh, yeah, that does. And it's a Feudal Japan Dark Souls. Yeah, sign me up. Those are pretty much the three games I think that stood out to me the most, which I was personally the most excited for. Yeah, Ori as well. Uh, another one would be uh, Devil May Cry 5. That's big, too. That's really exciting. Five uh, is not a remake of two. Yeah, it's, that's super exciting. Yeah. yeah. But out of those, which one is just on Xbox? I'm just, that's the thing that's like, ah, oh, it just Hector, really hurts. It's even Hector Horizon 4, it's, like, not, it's a Microsoft like a, exclusive. There's no more Xbox exclusive. It's just no, Microsoft. There's no, there's, there's no there's Microsoft exclusive either. Horizon yeah, 4 is. I, I, huh? Horizon 4? No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Out of all of them, there's a Horizon 4, like, Forza Horizon 4, right? Mm-hmm. I drive in real yeah. life. I try to play a game about that shit. It's like buying a game about raising kids. Shit! Well, that one actually is, I think, is the most fun series. I think that's better in a Forza just because I <laughs> like the you could go anywhere type thing. That's, like, more fun. Yeah, it yeah, looks, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... I think they did good, you know. Right. A lot of these games are super exciting, but... Hector has got a way of like smacking you and bringing you. I, to I just don't listen to my game choices, like, guys. All these come, cool on, games, come on, all these cool games, and then Doctor Hector looks. Hector's like, like oh, but how many of these? That's are the reason why I thought Ori was the best one for Microsoft because that's for Microsoft. I mean, that's why I think that was there. You, but you I you write Hector? Forza Horizon. Just, definitely, I think that's a fun game. I think it looks like a all those arcade style games like racing like that. I love that. I don't really like the simulation games anymore. You soup. I I'm not really into a racing simulator. I, I got a quick question for you guys. Well, yeah. actually, two. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Shonen Jump. Naruto. I, I'm a fan of Naruto, as they say, you know, the weebers say in America. Uh, Kate and I have watched the entire series, and we haven't gotten on Baruto, but his son's story. But uh, I'm a huge fan, and uh, Bleach and uh, and Death Note. I love anime. Mm-hmm. There's a game that they showed, and it's called Jump Force. They oh they they already God. have a game that's similar to this. Uh, that's already out on PS4 and Xbox. Looks so awesome. I can't wait to play that uh, because you'll be able to bridge the gap of Dragon Ball Z. And, you and anime all these... Weibo people are just circle jerking over that game. You're so excited. <laughs> I think it's Probably released though. though. <laughs> Isn't it? Didn't that game release in Japan already? I think that's in the arcade system already. It looks, like, I it think looks that, fucking yeah. awesome and I can't it's wait cool. to play it. Uh, it's cool. Now, I got a quick question for you because, of course, they did tease Battletoads uh, coming to the Xbox. And, of course, that is going to be exclusive. Uh, for PC and Xbox, but what do you? What would you guys, Robbie? I think that you're too young for Battletoads. You probably never played it's it. Still twelve, remember? Uh, yeah. You, you turned twelve? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just did. Thanks for remembering. I know. Thank you for I know that not birthday. too nerdy. You're a few years younger than me, but yeah. you, you are a man of of style and of wisdom and passion when it comes to gaming. You sent me the the Super Mario. You sent me is still in the plastic. I never took it out. Because it means something to me. Uh, Battletoads that's coming out. Would you like to see a graphical upgrade to the old Battletoads? Or a completely renewed no, new game. vision of a th- open world? Sorry, I'm too young. Well, I'll stay out of it. Just don't say Battle Royale, okay, Robbie? Uh, Battletoads Battle what Royale. Would you, that's what what we would mean. you like this to be? Would you like it to be a remake of the classic that everyone loved because of its brutal difficulty and, of course, colorful characters? Or would you like to see like a, a third-person or first-person style open-world game that completely turns it on its head and makes it something new? See, the the game was only... The reason why the game was good in the, the past, it was a beat-em-up, right? You just go around and... Uh, it's you know, rage down. Beat and the hell out of that's the way it was. I mean, that was one of those games just like a Double Dragon in the sense that you could kick... 
your partner's ass too. Like, in fact, you play two players. I always felt that it was harder to play and beat that game because with two players. The shit out of you. I yeah. beat the game a couple times when I was younger Ooh, by I like myself. That, DJ. I've never beat that game ever, ever with someone else because someone always <laughs> screws you up. And like the scenes that you're going around, like you'll you'll hit each other. It's it's hard, and it, it, it's hard to do that. Of course, they have like I think they have the the third mode, right, where you play together but you can't hit each other by accident. Um, I you know I think they would have to stick to that because I don't see that game being successful in. I, I don't know. I don't see successful third person. I don't see successful first. I don't think they could do it any other way but a side-scrolling game. Or even they come forward. It has to be like a beat 'em up style of game because I think what appealed people to that is that there's difficult levels, right? You know, when you're flying like the little, little difficult, yeah, the little jets you're going around and the obstacle courses and stuff to memorize. You're going up or down. If there could be a wall in your way. Those are some of the, the the difficulties of the game that people enjoyed. I think that that's part of the game. So if they do that, um, what's the other game that came out not too long ago? The they played like tribute to all the other ones. They had like a jazz theme and all that stuff. Um, ah, oh, it's a it's sorry it's a, for what? It, there's a game that came out for uh, recently. Yeah, it, it was on a PC as well. It's on Xbox stuff. Like it was. Um, oh, oh uh, uh, Cuphead. Yeah, Cuphead. You know oh. what I mean? I feel like if they go that route, similar in that direction, and keep it to roots like that, I think it'll be more successful. And they keep it down to like a thirty dollar charge like that. I think it'll be more successful than them getting like a full length sixty dollar game that's like a third person. Like I don't know what they'll create to be honest with you, because you well, really well, can't well, too much of those characters. One, one thing that we've seen, uh, and I think that we've seen it really in spades at E three is that sometimes remakes can be better than the original. Uh, yeah. Perfect example of what's yeah, going on with Resident Evil yeah. 2, what we're going to talk about later on. But uh, I would like to see what these visionaries have in mind for something old. For me, games that are perfect in my own mind as far as beat-em-ups, I don't think you can get better than Streets of Rage 2. I think that's the best beat-em-up uh, for that era and prop for me in my entire life. I think that that's the best beat-em-up. Uh, if they were to recreate that and 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 do you know graphical upgrades and resolution and texture, without changing the game, I would pay whatever they want. But some games, I do that, believe that there are room for improvement. I think there's uh, room for uh, story development, character design, uh, different aspects of the game to be fleshed out. Battletoads to me was always a fun game. It was very brutally hard. And at that time, there was a lot of other games I could play and beat a lot faster. So I didn't stick around yeah. to beat it, but I understood what it was. And so for me, you know, as a uh, older guy now with five kids and a wife, and I don't know if I'll, you know, I don't want Battletoads to be the new Dark Souls. Mm. I don't want it to be so brutally hard that it's like, oh man, I don't. Now I feel like I did when I was, you know, mm. twelve. I want, I want to see what. Hey, they when can you're my age. You turned twelve. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, we already talked about this. Yes, I'm so basically, I, I completely agree with you. I, I agree that Turtles in Time is the best beat em up game ever. I agree. Turtles um, in Time? I've never played these games. I'm <laughs> way too young for this. Oh, God. Now you got me all mad. I've, I've never played like, any of these I games. I agree with you. That, that is the best beat em up ever. Good job. <laughs> like, I've never played Turtles any of these. Is fucking amazing. Is it? Because I was not around. I play it on here. Uh, and I've never introduced this to Beastly Thoughts. But this is my little buddy. It's called the Yobo. And it goes with me everywhere. Oh and it my is God. a portable SNES, or oh. as we say when you're older than 30, a Super Nintendo portable. And it's fucking unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so this is a Yobo. Congratulations, you guys. Get one, buy one. It's sick. Take it anywhere. It's big and bulky. It will not fit in any pockets. And when we play it, people will notice. And it's big. Turtles in time. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, you did mention Cuphead. I, I actually have that on PC. And I haven't played it. That's going to be super exciting. Just Cause 4, for people who just like to blow shit up, uh, looks like it'll be fun. Hopefully oh, yeah, that's out in December. Future. Yeah, that'll be cool. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, my God, that trailer they showed. Oh, that game looks so cool. Oh, I, I want to see gameplay, could, though. Do you guys think that's on current hardware? Uh, it's probably going to be a cross-gen game. It, I think. But the thing is, for current hardware for who? Like, well, I'm, I'm not talking computers. Now, I mean, computers. What I mean I'm is, talking. 
Now, uh, we're talking maybe PS4 or, or an no, Xbox it's One X, Xbox maybe. One. Yeah, so yeah. I meant, like, you think it's it's going to be their next-gen consoles? No. All right, I do another show, and, and on that show, they, they specified my, my co-host. They said, there's no <laughs> way that this game is going to be on current hardware as far as home oh, console, PS4, Xbox One. Uh, and they say that it's going to be the next generation of home consoles and, and maybe yeah, GTX 10, whatever, you know, is coming next. I don't know because CD Projekt Red's in, in an amazingly astute development studio. And what they've done in the past with, you know, The Witcher, we see that game and the way it runs on PS4 and, you know, and the, and the Xbox One. That game's not last gen, right? It's it's all PS4. Beastly, we have we have someone who's British in my chat, by the way. <laughs> Look, what do you think? Of, <laughs> what do you think of Beastly's accent there? I think that was pretty ten out of ten. I think it's a piss poor attempt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, don't be a, don't be a fucking hater. Damn. <laughs> you know. Wow. You know, you're, you're Hector, a bloody that is hater. Rude. Don't, don't, don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. That was such a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually pretty damn good, actually. If I looked up, I would think you're like, you're definitely British for a second. I'm not no, going to no, lie. No, yeah. I'm like, what I'm the hell? Just, Where I'm are you from? Uh, you know, when, when we go to Walmart, you know, Kate and myself and me children, <laughs> Walmart. I, I, talk, I talk like this <laughs> loudly, and, and people come around and they see a big black guy, and they say, excuse me, where are you from? I said, from the, from the UK. And they say, what? <laughs> uh, I, I'll just say I'm from, I'm from Britain. And they say, what are you doing here? And I say, I got friends and family who live here, and I want to live the American dream. And maybe I'll do the rest of the show in this accent then. <laughs> Please don't. I, I don't think I can like <laughs> stop laughing. If you can keep it thing. up though, I'll be impressed. Like, no, I, I, this is a natural thing for me. I've been able to do it. You know, <laughs> keep it up for, for years. Someone's uh, calling you out. Luke I kind of want to know if we yeah. put this on YouTube. You know how they have like the little. Uh, on the bottom, the little subtitles, stuff like that. I'm kind of curious if they're going to, like, switch it up, like, English accent quotes. And English put... UK. <laughs> now, now, you know what? You know, let, me, let me just say to all the haters there, you know, I see some haters in the comments to- telling me I'm fake and I'm not who I am on the inside. Sometimes people tell me I'm not a black man. Fuckers. And, and you know what? I am. And so for you to say that I'm not speaking this way because it's not who I am, who are you to say what? what language or uh, uh, accent I was born with. You don't know me. Wait. You don't know anything about my family. So, you know, maybe maybe I talk like this. Wait a second. So, I didn't know you are black. I just thought that was a green screen effect. Yeah, but I, now thought, I, I know. thought this was all just, just some <laughs> smoke and mirrors for a while. It's CGI. You know, it's a... Listen, yeah. dude, you know when, when I can talk, I can sound like anybody, man. I mean, seriously, when I go places and if I call someone and make reservations, I make sure it's always there on time and when I show up and I go, Hey, uh, you got a reservation for me? Yeah, I'm Batman. For Beastly Game. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I love doing accents. Um, Be- Beastly's Black British Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best <laughs> title for the new podcast ever. Damn it, I gotta right. rename it to that now. <laughs> Please do that, but, DJ. Yeah. Just name it that. And, 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 and Black following British up and, and ending this thought, Cyberpunk 2077 looks like it might be uh, my game of the year, uh, simply because uh, what what CD Projekt Red's done at this point is already resonated with me as a gamer so much. Uh, the world building, the, the, the character design, uh, there's so much, so many things you can do. Uh, side quests are more meaningful, and like even The Witcher Three, like this is a game that Kate and I play consistently to this day. Uh, now we're done with all our milestones and destiny, so we might actually go back to that game and and play some of it even some more. Like now, uh, and so for me to see anything that this developer is doing, it, oh my God. it makes me so so excited uh, for the future. And and I think all gamers should be excited right now. So, Beastly or, or DJ after the stream title, the Beastly's Black British Thoughts Life. <laughs> That's what my stream title is. <laughs> the stream has been hey, oh I don't think you can put that on Twitch. They might ban you. I know what, yeah, switch it back. Switch it back. I didn't think this through. I'll let you know right now. Switch I didn't think this through. Yeah, yeah, you know. DJ, DJ, please do it. Switch it back. And just let you know, they they I might do that. I they might I don't think, think about that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah, switch um, it back. 
I, I'm going to continue here. So oh. PS4. <laughs> or so PS4, good. right? So, Sony only had just a handful of games here. Uh, and they were amazing games. We talked about this you know, pre-show. Uh, maybe during the show. I can't remember at this point. Thank but you. <laughs> Sony, they showed the best games, but there's just like six of them. Uh, yeah. Let's let's start off with uh, our thoughts on The Last of Us Part 2. Now, The Last of Us Part 1 is, is certainly my favorite game of all time. Uh, the single-player campaign is, is to me, uh, the greatest game I've ever experienced in my life. And uh, also, the multiplayer is, to this day, the greatest multiplayer I've ever played. And, and because it's so level, there's so many things you can do. Uh, there's so many aspects uh, to the way that you can approach a game. To me, uh, the, the Last of Us is uh, similarly the greatest game ever made, uh, and so when I when I saw uh, the reveal of the Last of Us two, I, first firstly I thought it was more of a, a vertical slice of, of what you know they wanted the game to look like because uh, you know they've recently announced that the game was was happening. We saw that trailer last year with Ellie you know, sitting, nursing her wounds, and Joel walking into the house with, you know, all Someone's going to come in the stream and think you're actually British. <laughs> Someone is actually I, going I forgot, to think you were British. You know, yeah, I forgot I wasn't. But, but let's just keep <laughs> going. Just, yeah, play along with it. But when, when Joel walked into the house and all these people were, you know, laid up, dead and bloody, and, and Ellie was in the room and he looked at her and said, you sure you want to do this? And she said, I'm going to get them all. That was very exciting, but get I thought all. it was a very vertical slice of a game but when we saw this here i felt like we were watching the evolution of maybe uh uncharted 4 like you saw the, the way the characters look the faces and, and, and whatnot in this inside this cathedral which sony failed by having people move from room to room doing e3 oh, was a horrible uh, in the not to know, oh, you, no. you did mention this earlier it was like they had great games but the delivery was horrible it's like let's show last of us part two. Oh, intermission it's like why would I, you do I, that? I, I can't believe that they would even do that. But, you know, oh, I rough. guess sometimes you, you make mistakes when you're winning. <laughs> but, Sony you know, blows their load real hard, and they're like, okay, we just got to pull it back now. We can't ejaculate anymore. We got to let the people yeah, yeah. We gotta let the people catch their breath. <laughs> exactly. It's too much. And, and so when, when I saw this scene here with, with Ellie talking to this, this guy who came over, talk, they mentioned her father, uh, and, and, and then this girl comes over, I was just looking, you know, the graphical aesthetic and the way that these characters were crafted really reminded me of what I felt when I played Uncharted 4. It's like a new level of, of character customization and, and so much detail in their face and, and the expression. It wasn't like, uh, it, it didn't feel, it, it was the Uncanny Valley. It, it's like that, you know, you see something that's so, it's reaching the precipice, precipice of reality so much and it's like you don't know what you're looking at it i felt that way and then mm -hmm. when it, they they scrolled around the back of my head and then it, it transitioned to seem the gameplay that fucking blew my oh mind my God. Think, that that blew my mind you're from virginia there um but yeah uh when when the, that moment happened and, and you saw ellie in this precarious situation and and you saw the, the world and, and the way that she's able to like get into grass and everything moved it, it made me feel like uh, the same way I did when I watched Uncharted and when I played Uncharted. You get into the grass and you move around and everything moves with you. But it looked better than, than Uncharted did, naturally. But to me, the most amazing part of that game was the AI, the artificial intelligence of the characters. It seemed unreal. Even a developer of another game went on Twitter and said, uh, fake. And, and so... For me, the, seeing it and seeing, you know, characters pull out guns and say, I have eyes, talking to his mates, and, and they're all running behind him, and they're, they're shooting arrows, shooting guns, swinging axes. This is going to be the greatest game I've ever played in my life. I can't wait to play it. I, I think it looks great. I think I, but here's the thing, though. I honestly, that was the one thing at E3 that didn't shock me, because I, I knew coming in, I, I trust Naughty Dog, right? I know it's probably going to be the best graphics we've ever seen. You know, I, I figured it's going to be, it just could be a good story. I, I, I don't good story. doubt them. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm saying like, I don't doubt them at all. So that's why this one didn't shock me because everything I saw is what I expected. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't. That's exactly what we expected, but it looks amazing. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm still, I wasn't shocked yeah, with Phoenix. Right. I, I just pictured that they're that Oops. great. Like they're the one of the best developers, if not the best developers ever, the best studio. You know I, what I mean? I think that, that they are. Uh, yeah. You know, We've mentioned one earlier, Rockstar is, is almost... To me, they're on the same level. And to me, Naughty Dog had to transcend it and reach that level. Oh, Naughty Dog? Is that how you say it? It's not, it's not, it's Naughty. Naughty. Naughty Dog. Okay. Oh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> anyway, look, look. So, so <clears throat> my thought is this. They, Naughty Dog's had some resistance. I talked about that game earlier today. Oh my God, the segue to that. Oh my they, God. They, they've had some <laughs> resistance from, uh, I, I would say, uh, uh, social justice warriors. Uh, people who don't like uh, violence against women, they don't like violence in general, uh, and you guys saw that. Screw they those people. Yeah, I know. Pull the guts out, that's what I do. But it made me really happy to see that during this, this trailer, this reveal, that Naughty Dog didn't pull back at all. You know, I, oh, when yeah. I saw that scene where Ellie was in the in the grass and they had this man strung up by his neck and he was on uh, like a plank and they walk up to him, they kick the plank and, and then gut him and, and he pulls guts out and just let it dangle there. I couldn't fucking believe it. It it, it, it blew my mind uh, that they're, they're still pushing that hard. I guess it would be R writing that, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I think a game like this truly deserves. Super excited. Sony had great games. That was one of the greatest ones mm -hmm. there, but just not, not too many of them. So. Yeah, we but knew we everything we were going to see. We knew this in like, advance, yeah. Oh, yeah, they yeah. set expectations even before. Like, they said, we're going to show these exclusives, and there weren't that many surprises. The only true surprise was Resident Evil 2. Ooh, I feel like that, oh, was, uh, that oh. was a good one. That was a really good now, one. I, the, you'll forget one game you're forgetting about, the one surprise. I think that's a Sucker Punch's game, because that Sucker Punch game, that one oh my God. was, a, yeah, that was an I amazing did game. not expect it to yeah, look Ghost like Ghost of Tsushima that. looks badass. Yeah, it really does. It, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima is... Uh, first of all, the studio that created that, I did not expect them to make something like that. Second of all, if you look at the graphics in that game, like the way it looks, they might scale it down, That's whatever. I'm talking about presentation-wise, I did not that expect that. Game that. Had, what we saw, do you believe that game is on PS4 or PS4 Pro? That had to be PS5, personally. I, that are was, you sure I, don't, nuts. I don't know. It, it'd be a hard sell because I so many, so, there's 80 million people on PS4 and they see this game, they're going to want that game at home. And, and to potentially go out and buy it for PS4 and get a different product, uh, I, I just think... I don't doubt the PS4 could do that, though, because I, if you saw... I have a PS4 Pro, you know, I saw God of War. Like, the God of War game looked... Looks like that, it, 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 So it that's why I'm like, I feel like this definitely could be PS4, like, PS4 Pro graphics without a doubt. Like, I, I don't doubt that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean it's not gonna come out for. I don't know, but I don't doubt that that's PS4 PS4 Pro graphics. It looks similar to like the style, the way the shining effect and everything looks in God of War. And they went back to the particle effects instead of particles, it's leaves falling down and stuff like that. But yeah. those effects look very all, similar. All, all the way the wind blows and you see yeah. the, the girls with the moving fire. The that they was did the particle relief. effects with the with the the fire and the, the flames and stuff and little little tiny like. It was just it was just look really good, and I think that that to me was a shock because when you think about the studio they created, it's just like what? Like they went from infamous to this? Well, no, yeah, no, it no, looks no. insane. You know, you, you looks, know what? So cool. uh, I I gotta stop you there. Infamous uh, Second Son was an amazing looking game. Uh, it was at the beginning of PlayStation 4's life, and it was before the Pro came out. And, and to me, it it was <clears throat> kind of the the. The arbiter of games like uh, uh, Quantum Break, as far as the style, and there was so much you could do there, and it was a big, huge world, and, and so much you could play. To me, they they were already on the path to this kind of graphical fidelity. I feel like I'm the only one here. Yeah, what the heck and, happened to Hector? <laughs> Hector? Oh, he's he's gone. So it's just me being fake British in two cartoons. We can continue. <laughs> Britain, the cartoons. Yeah. And the thing about Ghost of Tsushima, too, is that, I don't know about you, Beastly, I keep forgetting. It's an open world game. Like, that, what they showed at E3, too, apparently that was, like, a side quest. Like, that's not even, like, a main thing. 
you know? So it's like, obviously the world is huge and yeah, I just can't even get over, like I couldn't get over how good that game looks. Like it has yeah, to be uh, a PS5. I, 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 I don't say this. Uh, oh, Cartoon Boy's but, back. Hello. When, when, <laughs> I, when, I, when, I saw, when I saw this game, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, it, it blew my mind. I did not think that uh, the PS4 would be able to do these type of graphics. And uh, I, the, 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 the moment where the woman turned and fought him, and it looked to me like, um, what is the name of the movie? Uh, came out years ago. The, the Japanese fighting movie. Um, you remember the dude that... No, that bald... describes a lot of different movies. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, <laughs> were you talking about, like... Mortal Kombat? What's the Keanu Reeves? Like, oh, that, no, that's no. Uh, <laughs> oh. Chow, Chow, Chow Young Fats is in the movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I, we were talking about. Uh, with the Japanese girl, they were fighting, and they were doing lots of fast movement. It yeah, reminded no, me of that game. Someone in, in, the, in the messages let me know. But, yeah, I mean, like, that game, it's just funny because, like, they went over that game and all of a sudden they put a highlight of, oh, Neo 2 is coming out. I'm like, man, well, you, I don't know if this beats out Neo yeah, 2 right now. Like, it, it. Lo it looked like uh, that, <laughs> that game might uh, shit on uh, Neo, uh, yeah. at, at least as far as the way it looks. But N Neo and Neo 2, it, uh, to me, those games are for a different type of player. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's more dragon, I mean, uh, uh, demon soul uh, uh, type of experience for people who want to, you know, a hard battle, but they want the Japanese or Asian aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, Ghost of Tsushima would be able to carry that, mm -hmm. that kind of movement moving forward. Is the real Beast of Gamer still here? Sure am. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. That's an imposter. That's not the real Beast of Gamer. It's me. All right. Oh, so, so what was the best game then? <laughs> Reminds me of puberty again. Uh, so uh, what was your favorite game in, in general then? In total, like what was the favorite game for PS4? Uh, Robbie, uh, okay, okay, my favorite game for PlayStation 4 was... Let me continue. My, my favorite game on PS4 <laughs> was The Last of the Part 2. But, but the one that really stole the show for me was the one I did not ex expect, and that was Resident Evil 2. Uh, and... and for you, you know, you know that the love, the joy of playing Resident Evil 2, I'm sure, uh, that caught me totally off guard the way that they uh, created this trailer from the perspective of a mouse, right? So, yeah, a little tiny mouse, you're on a kitchen shelf, you see uh, cereal boxes. And that was so smart. And there was a friggin' PS1 with a TV, PS1 too. There, mm -hmm. and, and that made me think that it's possibly. A PS4 exclusive, a PS4 exclusive. I was like, what? PS4. Why is it? Why is there a PS? You know. So maybe the Xbox version have an Xbox. The old mm. big Xbox, you know, the big giant one there. Uh, but when when that, everything came to fruition and and Sky got bit and then the zombie got his head taken off by by Leon, I almost shit my pants. So I, I maybe I did. I, I you know. probably did. <laughs> I, well, Resident Evil. For people like me and probably like you, Heck, uh, is just an unbelievable kind of experience. Uh, it, it changed the game for for uh, survival horror. It it was one of the founders of it. Of course, Resident Evil and Silent Hill really are the founders. Uh, but to me, that it solidified it. It made it more of a real thing. It changed the the, the dynamic of the gameplay. It was just so much there. Two yeah. uh, intertwining stories. Two discs. Uh, and so to see that and see the way that Capcom has kind of used that, the, the what is it, the uh, Resident Evil engine? What's it called? Resident Evil engine. The, the same engine as Resident Evil, so I don't remember yeah. what it was. To me, the, the cool thing, I think, I'm pretty sure they confirmed it, that it's using Resident Evil 4 point perspective. Like Resident Evil 4, like camera angle and everything. Like So that's where you're doing, yeah. over the shoulder, the same angle. So they changed yeah. the angle. That's what too, it looks so like in the trailer, to too. Like Resident Evil, yeah. yeah. You don't have to worry about the clunky controls. It's completely switched to Resident Evil 4 controls in a Resident Evil 7 engine, which is oh, just like oh, genius. Damn. And, and yeah. you, can, you can actually walk while you're shooting. Yeah, I know. Am I, the only one, am I the only one who kind of was blown away at the facial expression of the zombies? I, I watched the gameplay trailer of the actual 30 minutes. There's, a lot of people actually got a chance to play this 30 minute trailer the demo that was time so it wasn't like you could only get to a certain point it was 30 minutes you can go as far as you want 
Mm-hmm. And so I watched about five or six of them. And I'm a huge fan of George Romero. I'm a huge fan, well, his good movies. And I, I'm a huge fan of the zombie genre in general. But watching the way that these zombies interact, like once they get shot, once they get close to you, and, and the, the anger and the anguish and, and just the death in their face and the way that they just bite you, and, you know, that yeah. whole perspective, it caught me off guard so much. It 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 feeds for me that love of the zombie genre in a way that I don't think any zombie game has ever done. Like, it's so awesome. I just think the then again the old school Resident Evil two and Resident Evil original one uh, for me like half the horror was trying to run away because you couldn't control it too well. Take so controls, baby. Take control. <laughs> I'm like running in circles and running to the wall and using the wall to guide me to go the right direction. <laughs> like and hopefully <laughs> I open the door right before they kill me. So that, that was like half the horror. If you could open the door before they actually kill you. <laughs> like, so I don't know. What they should do? Right before this game comes out, they should re-release the original. Remastered. Uh, not the way they did Resident Evil 1 remastered, because they actually completely remastered that. But mm. kind of the way they did with Final Fantasy 7, just so people can kind of get into it and experience it from a different perspective, from the original perspective. You know, for me, I, the tank controls made so much sense at the time. Now it's just convoluted and fucking destructive to your hands, to your brain, trying to figure out how to do it. But oh, yeah. I would love to just <clears throat> kind of get back in there and, and, and see it and enjoy it again. Before I wish I... it's the add-on. I wish it was just an add-on to the game. Like if they have the regular game, you can play either version like that and just show as it. As soon as so that happened, know. my brother Joe, shout out to Big Joe. Little Joe, Joe, get your shit it. together. We love you, though. Uh, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got it together. Uh, as soon as he went <laughs> off, nice. uh, he, he pre-ordered Resident Evil and got his little uh, theme and showed me like 200 something days till the game comes out. He took a picture because it told him how many days. But yeah, I, that game is going to be a big deal. I, I want to know how confused. How confused were you both when you, when you watched the Death Stranding trailer? Now it's just confusing to the point of it's not even interesting. It's just like, okay, come on. Like, just. Do you, uh, do you think it's, it's confusing just for the sake of being confusing? At but, this point, think, yes. Like, really? <laughs> I, I'd like more, but I, I feel like uh, if if Hideo Kojima were to give us more, it could potentially hurt the narrative of the story. Kojima, it's, man, he is uh, he, he's a he's a he's, human he's being. A, he's, he's a, a, a sneaky he's a little bastard. Guy. Yeah, he's a smart guy, and and you know that at some point the the Metal Gear games they they did become convoluted. Uh, Res, uh, uh, Metal Gear Two, in particular, fucked my mind as a young man. I played the mm-hmm. game and by the time I beat, I was like, what the fuck it just happened to me? So I don't know, uh, you know, what his perspective is on the game. Yeah, that game just looks so cool, but I'm like, oh my god, what is this game at this point? It, it looks awesome. I, I think that the whole aspect of these things that you can't see walking around their hands and you got to be real fucking That careful. shit looks you crazy. Special I love technology to see him the and horror fucking elements. Babies. I'm like, what the fuck? What yeah, the, that's so I, cool. I want to hear the speech or his, uh, his sales pitch to Sony on this game. I mean, he had to sit inside of a boardroom and, and, and explain to them his vision. He said, there's a, there's a baby. Look, I'm, I'm Kojima. Chest. I'm batshit crazy. I got some ideas in mind. Let's talk. <laughs> That's yeah. basically it. He just said his name. They're like, okay, fine. Kojima. Exclusive. Enough. Yeah, exclusive. <laughs> yeah. exclusive. We don't even know what this is yet. Bam. We're going to buy it. We're going to buy it. You know it. what? Uh, when we got done with E3, I was, I was looking at it. I was like, I, I'm going to buy the game, of course, because I want to support Kojima anyway. But Absolutely. Like, it yeah. looks like it's going to be... Interesting. As Kojima slowly it, it, teases your wallets from behind yeah. and taps you on the back. Yeah, he pinched my ass. But, uh, yeah, he'll slap that ass I, too while he's tapping when, that wallet. When, 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 when he's tapping that wallet, <laughs> Kate said that's the game that she's most excited for out of E3. So yeah. there's a lot of people like that that see the intriguing aspect of the game and they're like, this is so fucking out there. Yeah. This is like. Uh, it looks so Zone cool. Outer Limits. Really meets does. Metal Gear, meets some crazy shit, uh, you know, the island, and it's like, some people just want to know what the hell's happening, and, and they'll pay that entry, $60 entry price, just to know what the fuck is happening. Part of the thing that amazed me about Kojima, though, like, this this man is pushing 55 years old, dressed in some flashy jeans, doesn't and like, and like he's going out the club. Like, he's about yeah. to go out the club with a blazer and everything. This guy and he doesn't is, age. like, 55 years old. He's, like, 55 years old, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. He hasn't <laughs> aged in about 20 years, I swear. I mean, hey, look, man, he's, he's dressed for success. Same with friggin' Todd Howard. That man doesn't seem to age either. <laughs> like, he doesn't. Shit. 
I like it more than Ron Howard. Okay, so look, uh, it's been a long time since I played a a, a, a superhero game, and uh, seeing that Spider Man trailer actually got me excited. Spider Man uh, looks fucking cool too. Oh my it, god! It really, really, really got me. That excited. looks so good. What they showed. Oh yeah. And, and the good thing about it is it's all self-contained. It has nothing to do with what's going on in the, in the movies or in the comic books. It's a contained story. Yeah, that comes out September, right? Yeah. Yeah, months. September 4th. Man, we're two months away from that. Damn. That's going to be soon. Yeah, that's, that's a definite buy. And mm. just the way that it looks and how fast you can do things. It, Ooh, seems like it rustles my with, jimmies with for sure. controller in your oh, hand, so you good. Can actually, speaking of controllers, I had to fucking take this thing apart yesterday. Oh. Yeah. Have you guys ever bought a PS4 controller? That would not charge? No. 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 Well, I did. And anyway, I had to take this fucking thing apart. And uh, it's been sitting over there, you know, on my little uh, place with my statues. And my controller, the one I mainly use, is going bad. And uh, so I took it apart and repurposed some of the parts. So now I'm. Well, shit. shit. Damn. Hey, man, you should have used the opportunity to mod it. You could have put like LED lights and other shit in it. You know what? I was able to get all the screws back in. That's all I was concerned with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kind of guy. I told Kate. I said, if I if I fuck it up, well, it's it's at least the controller's still fucked up. But if I make it work, then we got something. Yeah. <laughs> I made this shit. Go yeah. oh back, guys, and make this shit work. The Spider-Man, like that game, looks and reminds me of Spider-Man Two, which I thought was like the best Spider-Man game there was. And Spider-Man 2, but it's just update graphics, update animation. It looks way better, but like I feel like that that to me, I feel started that the quick time, but like fighting style, like sort of like Arkham Knight and Arkham, because then Batman used it better afterwards. And then I think sure every did. Spider-Man afterwards tried to grab it back from the way Batman did it. And I yeah. think this one is just the best combination of all of them, like the way it looks like. And there's so many different things you could use, like... Uh, things in the environment and to, to attach someone or to use this stuff. Like there's so many cool things that they, they did like a, like a spider web bomb or something like that. Yeah, you got all like, those like, kind of accessories. Cool. Yeah. You can really yeah. change the way you play the game. I'm really yeah. excited about it. Spider-Man yeah. uh, is really, really grown on me. Of course, Batman is my favorite superhero, but uh, this looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to see what, the kind of story they've created. Oh yeah. And uh, this is like the only uh, Sony announcement that's coming out this year. Uh, just to be quick, they did Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, Destiny Forsaken trailer, Control, which is made by Remedy, which did make Quantum Break. Yeah, Mario, yeah, which, I forgot about has, that too. Yeah, yeah so uh, Remedy is like, uh, you know, Quantum Break didn't do well. Uh, and, and when I was looking at the trailer, I, I told Kate, I said, this kind of looks like Quantum Break, and then boom, it ends up being... Yeah, great. I was thinking so too, I was like, this kind of looks like Quantum Break. Yeah, a lot like so, it. So, some sexy brunette out there beating ass and stopping time. I'm cool. They with that. did a Kingdom Hearts three trailer, which is a must have. Uh, if you're too grown for uh, Kingdom Hearts, go pick up a newspaper and go sit on an island somewhere. We don't give a fuck about you. Uh, <laughs> Neo two, which looks awesome. I didn't play yeah. the first one. Death Stranding and Spider Man. That was the, that encompassed all Sony's thing. I think yeah, Sony, yeah. I don't care about Kingdom Hearts. Uh, which island are you going to? Make sure they have internet because we need you for beastly thoughts. Uh, <laughs> and that was that was the uh, the embodiment of what Sony did. I think Sony had great games. I think that their delivery, Hell had, yeah. as, as not too nerdy said, their delivery, yeah, delivery was, was rough. The presentation was rough, but the games they showed were good, even if there weren't tons of surprises. But well, was, I mean, if you think about it, the, just the games you mentioned: Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, like everything they showed looked fucking. Resident awesome. Evil Two, yeah. Spider Man. Name one of the Xbox games that, that beats those. You can't. True. Yeah. I mean, what are you gonna say? Uh, I'm looking at them right now. It's like uh, Battlefield's on PlayStation. See if these know. Uh, Kingdom Hearts PlayStation showed it. Metro Exodus is a multiplayer. Crackdown Three, hell no. I mean, Fallout Seventy Six. Oh man, poor Crackdown. That game. Crackhead, man. That shit is fucked Crackhead. up. All right, so moving on to the big, the big news of the three. Nintendo. Man, the only person that had uh, less games than Sony. They literally had so, Smash Bros, and that was it. Like basically, oh, well, that was half their conference. Yeah, it was Smash. Oh, yeah. And they they went through every move for each character. Yeah. Now you can kick, see, stand up, kick. Yes. You have every character I mean, I like from every Smash Brothers everybody. game. It's like, all right, it's still the same game. I just don't well, give a damn. I, I love Smash. Uh, you know, I got Smash last night in my my. They're fun, but they just it's the same game every time. That, 
Not this one. This one, to be honest, if you look at Smash, they they sped up the game. So like they they went back to like melee. Like it's like it's like faster so like melee speed. So like that changes everything. And the fact that it's every character that like you have to give them credit for that, whether you like yeah, Nintendo or cool. not, that every character is there. Like that's something that you're not you have to buy DLC. Um, no, I'm no. thinking about getting. I had one. mine. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get another one now. I'm I was right. waiting for something like. Get a switch so I can beat that ass. And I, I was waiting for something like. Get a switch so I can beat that ass. ass. Just buy right, a switch so, so I can beat you. So when you lose, are you gonna come out here and say I lost? If I lose to you and Smash Brothers, I swear to God, I'll send you a hundred dollar check. No, no, because you you make T-shirts. So I'm gonna have you make a T-shirt that says not. Too nerdy own this ass. I swear to God, I'll, 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 I'll wear it. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'll wear it on the whole podcast, and you guys got the confirmation now. But I get to decide the shirt that you're actually going to be wearing. All right. So, uh, yeah, game, when the game comes out, and there won't even be any competition. But this is like Mortal Kombat two and three, and, and Mortal Kombat, you know, and Street Fighter Alphas. You're not gonna fucking touch me in these games. Okay, not we'll see. All. We'll see. I mean, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll first see how this. Uh, who, I'm trying to think who who had to learn the hard lesson. Did I play you when it came out on this, on the the Wii U? What? No, you didn't play me. Oh, I played. Uh, I played Inner oh. Black Ninja and had his <laughs> had it in his fucking ass. Basically, we're gonna whoop your ass to Smash out. Bros. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you now. I swear to I swear to God, it sounds super. Get your ass uh, Sounds super aggressive. Uh-huh. You don't know anybody who can beat me in Smash Brothers. Oh man, you're oh, right. Man. I don't know myself too all well. Right, all right, but uh, you don't, <laughs> I'm telling you now, heck, you don't know anybody who can beat me. I just in Smash don't know many people who play Smash anymore because it, it's a dead uh, game. You piece of shit. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll play right, this. So- Go ahead. I'll, I'll even all right. I'll I'll even loosen up a little bit and make sure that you Not know. This. I'll let you even choose a character for me to play to kick your ass. <laughs> All the listen, characters, listen, I'll yeah. let you choose the character you for me to kick your ass. I wish you had this with, on the Wii U. That I'm going to beat you, know, you I, with. I, I brought it out to play Dude, my son. I the Wii U version. The Wii U version is slower. It's slow. it's slow. I always said that's the thing. Melee, I would just hand. Pitbull says yeah. he's going to whoop you in Street Fighter. Like like, I can't do it right now. He's going to whoop that ass. That's why so that they bad. So we'll see what happens because we also have to, I'm sort of curious. How this yeah. is gonna play online All for them? <laughs> Beastly. Uh, Pitbull says he's taking you to town in Street Fighter. He'll you fuck you up. Oh That's man! What he says. You ain't that guy. He's, he's gonna go beat you, and he's gonna take your name, Beastly. So- yeah, he's gonna tag you. The disrespect. You go. You go. You can't. Pitbull, can't turn you better put a bone in your mouth and chill out. All right. So look, that was Nintendo's big news, uh, but they did follow up with some other interesting news. That uh, to me was kind of the earth shattering moment at E3 because it didn't have many of these moments. They showed Mario Party, which looked fun, you know, for kids. Uh, they showed, as Robbie wrote, other random shit. And <laughs> like you... they also released and announced at the same time Fortnite for the Switch, which I immediately downloaded. Didn't I get that down? Did I not know that down? No, you did. Well, there... I see. Okay, you were making it like I didn't. I'm like, what? I, yeah. I would... Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Are you okay, sir? I thought that was one. <laughs> anyway, um, Fortnite I, for the I Switch. The list right now. I played it. I played it. Uh, it plays amazingly well on the Switch. You playing play it with PS4 Switch. players or no? <laughs> you play with other <laughs> other Switch huh? players. Oh, yeah. I, you Xbox got player. that butt whooped as soon as you want to get someone else for Xbox. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I. You know, I got whooped. You know, as soon as I went into the house and it was my axe. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I walked in the house and like, bitch. Ooh, got shot. <laughs> I, time to quit. I was at work. But, um, Fortnite's a great game. My kids really, really enjoy it. I, I just, I'm not really into the whole uh, battle royale thing right now. It just, it's kind of a, a passing moment for me. It's like I'm driving past the fucking fair. I know everybody's over there, you know, having an orgy on top of the fucking fair as well. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's it's a great thing. I, I think that people are really, really enjoying it, but. I guess I'm getting a little too old, and I just like to slow it down a little bit and play different style of games. But mm. it does work really, really well. It plays well. It's 30 frames per second versus the 60 that you get on regular Xbox One or the Xbox One X. So that is going to give uh, Xbox players a definitive advantage. But it does run extremely smooth, and that 30 is locked. So uh, 
It's like playing Destiny against Call of Duty. <laughs> 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 you know, Destiny on PS4 versus Call of Duty on PS4. You know, uh, Call of Duty players are going to fucking wipe you because they can see you faster, they can yeah. move, they can articulate the controller faster. So, uh, but you know, for people on Nintendo, you know, uh, I, I think it's it's a give and take because. You can't play your Xbox walking through your living room. You know, you got to be sitting there stationary at a at a particular spot. But on the Switch, you know, I could be playing here and walking there and put it on the TV. So I think mm-hmm. that the mobility aspect of it makes it probably, in my opinion, one of the best places places to play Fortnite. It looks great too. Well, one thing before we skip over, we skipped over Super Mario Party. That's not what I want to really talk about. I thought the one feature that Nintendo has is pretty cool that I will never use it. I don't know how many times people use it, but kids that do have Switches and they play with each other, the fact that you could position the two Switches next to each other in any way so that it incorporates the game, the game, like you'll see one character go from one screen to the next yeah, screen that's really in Mario awesome. Party, that's pretty cool. And I, I could definitely see a lot of kids like bring their Switches together and, and then create like a level from that and they're playing it. And I, I think that that's, that's really cool. Like that is definitely unique. And I, and I just want to give them credit for that because I really Nintendo is all didn't about see that. Fun. Yeah. yeah, so I, I well, never saw that coming, and I thought that's pretty cool. So, uh, and I, I'm not sure, but I'm not thinking we're going to be able to cover all these conferences because yeah. we, we can hit a few points, but right now we're right we're encroaching on the, the yeah two about that time. Yeah, we've gone pretty long, so I wouldn't. So I mean, soon. Bethesda overall thoughts, guys. Re- like I was like holy shit when they announced Starfield like and Doom Elder Scrolls too. and Doom, Doom 2. 2 just like wow like I was mind blown that was nuts ooh Fallout Shelter was now available on PS4 and Switch awesome yeah uh, that's cool nuts but uh yeah I thought that uh, Bethesda did an okay job uh to me Ubisoft kind of cringy was... at the start but you know what like they got a lot better the second half Wait, was you really talk, good you talking about the, the singer Andrew WK that yeah that whole thing for Rage 2 I was like and then it was yeah. yeah. I'm a black dude. I didn't know his name, but um, yeah. To me, that was okay. Just because I'm not black doesn't mean that. <laughs> okay. I know it's not because I'm not black. Black man ain't gonna know that dude's name. <laughs> okay. Uh, they, they, they might think he's Drake's cousin or his attorney. All right. So Ubisoft, to me, it was more of the same stuff that I wasn't super excited for. Wait, yeah, just probably. dance. Basically, what the heck? Yeah, yeah why got, are you not excited for that? You got, you got a point there, heck. <laughs> yes, dance. Um, but to me, probably the, the 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 thing from Ubisoft that excited me the most was just the thought of the Division Two and what they're going to bring to that. You know what? Division uh, Two. Good and Evil Two looked fucking amazing. Yes, that looks so yeah. good too. But uh, the Division Two, uh, the, the prospect of actually having a game that could stand toe-to-toe and, and compete with some of the mind share of the destiny console audience you know a place where you can play with your friends and, and pvp and be meaningful not just bullet sponges all the complaints that they've heard oh yeah uh, ubisoft does listen they do listen and and they've over the years their games have come out and they've not been good they've released patches and updates and made games that have been lacking really really good like rainbow six siege yeah. that game when it first initially launched it was like a disaster but now it's like as far as online play I mean, mm-hmm. people are fucking going crazy playing the game because uh ubisoft continued to work and make it a better place to play so uh yeah i, I can't wait to see what they're doing with the division two uh every other game here uh I'm, i don't know what to think assassin's creed another one i mean i'm like yeah Beyond Good and Evil 2 and The Division 2 to me were the standouts. Uh, Robbie, your favorite uh, spot to, to talk about video games. EA, what were your thoughts? I, it was an Battle EA conference. Battle shown. Uh, it does have a Battle Royale mode. Respawn, uh, Star Wars game. I'm Star excited Wars. about that. I, I hope that oh that's my God, was a title. Yeah, that was such a dumb yeah, way no. to announce it, though. Oh my God, like that I, felt. I hope pointless. that that turns out to be good. I have, I like, I really hope that that turns out to I be good. I wanted to see Amy Hennig. You know, friggin' Vince Sampel was high in the crowd too. <laughs> now that <laughs> game, did you? Hear he me? looks so stoned. <laughs> I wanted Amy because I, I was, follow, you know, I follow Amy Hennig on Twitter, and she was talking about what happened uh, with her game and how it just completely got canceled. Yeah, that like, so stinks. She's the creator of Uncharted. I think that her Star Wars story would have been fucking unbelievable. Oh my god, Visceral Star Wars game would have been incredible. I'm so sad but, that game got but shut down. Respawn Star Wars game, hopefully it's better than these recent movies. God, 
Kathleen Kennedy, you're a fucking disaster. You need to leave Star Wars alone. You almost got fired. You should have got fired. And the Force is not female. Stupid woman. The Force is the fucking Force. All right, so uh, okay. Battle Battlefront 2, Clone Wars update. Unravel 2. Yeah. Kate's going to enjoy that. Sea of Solitude. That's That kind of reminded me of Sea of Thieves a little bit. It's just Anthem. Just Anthem. That's all that I really now love. I'm up for Anthem After now. Now I'm excited Anthem, about that. A lot of people saw that gameplay and, and got turned off. We, you can't. The gameplay they showed there, you have to go look at the, yeah. the actual demo people played. Be, I don't know why everyone even said that. The one that they presented, like you it saw like Angry robot, Joe and yeah. all of them, they, they showed something that was completely boring. If you go look at what people actually got to play in the demo, the actual gameplay of it, it's night and day. Like oh, if you I, look I at that, it's that. completely different. They show like a good, a lot of them show like a good 19, 20 minutes of gameplay. That's the one you have to look at. Like, sure. because that, that's completely, that's what I imagine like Destiny would have been like. Where people just you could get people to drop to help you out and stuff like that. Oh yeah. They even yeah. mention certain things like it doesn't matter what level the other person is, they can help you out. They jump in there, you can help them out, and that's it. Like it doesn't matter the level systems, you can help each other out and you get experience points together. Like and that's so that's they went the over a lot should. more things. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that that's where the game is, and I think they have to make another trailer because the one that they showed in E3 for some reason, when I, I don't that- know. I was sitting next to Kate, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this looks kind of slow and yeah. kind of yeah. spongy." And I, but I didn't see. It. And you know, we talked about that on Revolver as well. And Briar said the same thing. He said that the the actual demo, completely night and day, night and day from yeah. what people saw there. So uh, that's that's actually music to my ears. I'm really mm-hmm. really happy to hear that because I was excited about something. It makes no I mean, sense. Usually they they sit down and try to grab the best footage for them to go. From that and actual people that everyone that did the demo and stuff were saying how great it was, how much fun they had playing it. And the people that watched the trailer just like, what the hell is this? Like, it's, it looked, it was just weird. I don't know how or why they did that. They like, needed to do something though to, to get people excited again. Yeah. And that was E3 2018. Super exciting time. It's been three weeks. Uh, we'll be back for sure next week, guys. Uh, we apologize. We've had some scheduling conflicts. Uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy. Had to do his uh, stripper thing in Vegas two weeks ago. Well, last yeah. week, <laughs> last week, Robbie made a pilgrimage uh, to some place out in, in, uh, in Canada. Canada. Yes, yes, that is correct. It's mm-hmm. called the Apology Pilgrimage, where they just walk a hundred miles and apologize to everyone they see. And we're yeah, happy that's what. Yeah, that's how I spent my weekend. Yes, just he's, apolog- he's very just apologizing. He's, a, to people. he's emaciated right now, extremely tired, lethargic. He told us pre-show that he's too wore out to even put clothes on, and that's why he's not showing his camera today so yes. he's very very yes, exhausted so he's actually he's doing everyone a favor right now so um <laughs> I'm, you know. doing, I'm doing you all a favor by shutting the webcam off you don't want to see me right now fun fact fun fact guys i drank five cans of this seltzer water during the show and normally if i have two i gotta urinate like a fucking racehorse but i drank five and i don't feel like i have to pee at all i wonder what that means could it be Cancer. that I drank so much last night and I'm fucking dehydrated. <laughs> Cancer? I'm a fucking Pisces. Isn't there uh, something with if you have to pee a lot or a little or something? It might be cancer, though? Yeah, you pee. No, or pee a lot. No, that's what cause. it is. I hope that's not the first thing a doctor goes to. Uh, can you tell me what's been going on? Uh, yeah, doctor. I've been pissing a lot. I've been pissing oh a lot. It must be cancer. Sit down. Sit down. We need to talk about this. Yeah. Then oh. next thing you know, they stick their finger. Oh, anyway. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it for it's you. a frosted exam. Oh God. I don't know, man. They, they, you know, around my age, they say. Actually, before my age. You know what? They you stick your finger your in prostate? their yeah. finger in your butthole when they want to. Yeah, I guess. You know, it's like this is just for just. I just want to know. Who was the first doctor to insist on this? Like, who was the first one that had the idea? That's what I, I wanted. Yeah, we gotta How did you come across that too? Tell that to someone. I just want. <laughs> It's a, it's a freaky ass dude in real talk. It's like if a woman goes to the OBG and it's a dude, you better believe at some point in time he said, I'm going to work on pussies. I mean, he said it to someone. I get to look at every pussy in my town. It's the coolest yeah. job ever. I'm sure he never looks at it the same way again after the shit he probably that would be fucking Yeah, cool. you see someone, you just, it <laughs> you changes like, your whole it's... viewpoint on them. Sick ones, hurt ones, broke ones. I mean, can you imagine the, the turmoil that goes through your mind? You get home and your wife is wearing a negligee and you just say, stop. I don't even want to see what you got. Just saying, I know people who worked at Pizza Hub back in the day, never ate pizza again. 
<laughs> just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Holy shit, Hector. That's a good, that's a good thing. Oh my god. And I can totally understand. But yeah, my, my point was, guys, I'm, I'm totally fucking dehydrated, and I feel so much better. Thank you guys so much uh, for, for hanging out with us today. I feel so sad that I didn't get a chance to see uh, you know the the Canadian hope, Robbie. Uh, hopefully, uh, you got some syrup. I'm here. Don't uh, worry. I'm still here. I love you all. Pilgrimage, uh, not too nerdy. Always awesome to be with you, my brother. Uh, and like I said, guys, it's been three weeks without us, but next week, two o'clock Saturday. We were a little late today because I didn't know what the hell time. Boom! It was. Put it in your calendars. Remind. Tell your parents. Tell your grandparents. Tell, your cousins. Is it tell everyone, baby. I'm gonna make a fucking rap song. I've done that. I got one to beat. I own. Did he just compare pizza to vagina? Best episode ever. (laughs) Yes. You have them both at the same time, you fucking pimp. Okay, pizza tonight. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap up the show now. I got to pee soon, too. Uh, Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, Just quickly to let everyone know, I'll be live. uh, I'll be streaming here within the next couple hours. I'll be live on Mixer, though. Of course, I'm sure everyone knows by now. I stream on both Twitch and Mixer, so we're going to be doing Mixer later. And as Beastly said, 2 p.m. Eastern time slash 11 a.m. Pacific time next Saturday. I guess we'll be back again. So that is going to be awesome. Uh, And we'll see you all then. But everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I'm sorry my webcam was not working today. I'm going to try and get it working for the stream later today. If not, I guess you're just going to deal with ghost me. Stop using the webcam for sex, Robbie. I know. know Goddamn porn is ruining my webcam. You got stuff (laughs) slathered all across the screen. Get that Vaseline off that fucking lens. (laughs) And with that, everyone, we will uh, see you next week. Take care, and uh, we will see you on the next Beastly Thoughts show. Bye-bye, everyone. Peace. Peace. Peace.